zit in de buurt of misschien zelfs aan dat wereldrecord gaat helpen. Dus we doen een nadrukkelijke beroep op u straks tijdens die 10.000 meter van Sivan Hassan samen met z'n allen richting Tokio. The 2021 World Athletics Continental Tour Gold reaches its halfway point today as we arrive in the Netherlands for the sixth meeting of the 12 on the tour. We're at the Fanny Blankers Kern Stadium. It's the FPK Games live from Hengelo. We have quantity, quality and hopefully qualifiers over the next two and a half the hours. There's a flavour of what's coming up. We kick straight off with a couple of the sports top the names. Mondo FPK Duplantis games. goes in the men's pole vault, and then it's the 10,000 metres world champion, Sifan Hassan, back on that, home soil in, in the Netherlands. We close the programme later on with one of the up and coming here. Dutch the female ever, athletics heroines at the moment, Femke Bol, in the women's 400 metres. We have plenty of talent in between as well. Some stacked middle distance races as athletes continue the quest in many cases for those Olympic qualifying marks. The good news is we have 1,500 spectators in for the 40th anniversary of this uh, famous uh, championships, of course, the FBK Games, named after Fanny Blankers Kern, who won those four sprint gold medals at the 1948 Olympics in London. Conditions pretty good, a little bit of a breeze down the back straight, but as you can see from the windsock, not too much to affect the athletes, and great to see smiling faces back inside athletics arenas. Wherever you're joining us from around the world on the World Athletics YouTube channel or other channels, my name's Chris Temple. Great to be with you again alongside the six times major medalist over 800 metres and celebrating the 10th anniversary of her very own 800 metres victory in Hengelo. It's a very good uh, good day to Jenny Meadows. Thanks, Chris. Wow, that makes me feel really old. <laughs> Ten years since I uh, won here in Henglo, but it's a uh, it's a fantastic meet, as you said. The season's up and underway now, and this is the sixth stop on the Continental Tour. And I think it's really important once we get to this meet. It's one of those historical meets, and a lot of the athletes come here wanting to, you know, already get that qualification time or standard for their respective event, and it gets really exciting from now on in. Those are the 10 men who will compete, contest our first field event. So we're throwing straight in. Often, of course, a lot of the big names get saved till later our in the meeting. But we are throwing you straight in the with the uh, male athlete of the year for the World the Athletics the Awards, Armand Duplantis, the world record holder, who actually is, of course, looking to come back from a very rare defeat, Jumping having lost in pretty European horrific conditions to his uh, good friend and rival Sam Kendricks of the USA in Gateshead in the opening Diamond League. That ended a 23 meeting Jumping winning streak for Mondo. So he is looking to come and produce something a little bit more that we would expect from him today as we see the athletes introduced uh, one by one in the uh, FBK Stadion. And I guess it's, uh, it's, it's not that Duplantis hasn't got much to prove, Jenny, of course, because we all know what he's capable of. But certainly with the countdown on now to, uh, to national championships and to the games themselves in Tokyo, he'd be looking to produce a little bit more now of what we expect from him. Definitely, and if you think back to that World Championships in Doha back in 2019, it was one of the most exciting events in that men's pole vault. I'm sure we'll be uh, treated once more to that great event come Tokyo, but certainly he'll be looking to put on a commanding performance here this afternoon. So we just saw Harry Koppel of the USA going through, Cole Walsh of uh, the USA. There's Ernest John Obiena of the Philippines, the Asian champion. There he is. Jogging his way through to the uh, runway. Thiago Brass, the Olympic champion from Brazil. So we have the world record holder, the Olympic champion. The uh, world number one, of course, this year on rankings. It's actually Chris Nielsen of the, uh, the USA. It's very rare that Armand Duplantis is not top of the uh, world standings as it is. But at the moment, the 591 from Chris Nielsen. As we see, one of the big Dutch hopes, Menno Vloon of the Netherlands, who uh, has been jumping very, very well this year. 585 is uh, lifetime best, but 596 indoors, Menno Vloon. And there is the man they've been waiting to see, Armand Duplantis, who uh, was speaking pretty confidently about uh, getting a couple of things right in this meeting. And as we've seen, conditions look uh, pretty good. Nothing will quite rival Jenny that Gateshead Diamond League for, for conditions and a few of the sprinters who were in action, will be in action later on certainly face that uh, on that day. But it's good to see that conditions look like they won't play too much of a part today. 
No, and this meet historically always has good conditions. It's interesting. I always look at the athletes and see how many layers they put on when they come out. So I was laughing actually at a few of the athletes with big jackets on, but 19 degrees. It's a pretty good weather for Europe at this time of year. It certainly is. Well, this is a meeting, as you say, that's steeped in history. The 40th anniversary of the meeting. Five world records have been set at this meeting, but notably in the uh, the middle to long distance events. The likes of uh, Kenanisa Bakili and Haile Gebra Selassie have set world records on the track in this event and will be not too far away from seeing Sifan Hassan getting her what could potentially, she says she's in amazing shape, potentially be an assault on the women's 10,000 metres world record. Uh, she is, of course, uh, the European record holder, having smashed that uh, mark on this very track back in one of her rare outings last year. But like for a lot of athletes, it's been a, a difficult last few months in terms of training opportunities. She wasn't able to get back into the US for visa reasons because of uh, COVID protocols and uh, current situation. So the athletes, though, will get a great reception. We've already heard on the, as the athletes were introduced there, certainly for the enthusiastic Dutch crowd and quite a late, actually, uh, decision. Only two weeks ago, Jenny, they were allowed to have spectators in. 1,500 is a, is a great number to have in. So. The meet director, Ellen van Langen, and uh, the team behind it out there in Hengelo have certainly uh, done, a, done a great job to certainly turn it all around in two weeks. Yeah, and I think this meet always has an enthusiastic crowd, and it's really nice that they've placed them all in the same sort of area. 1,500 people, which is around about a third of the seating capacity, so I think the athletes will have a really good atmosphere. And really interestingly as well, they've got a Zoom wall, so that's um, lots of fans that can log on to a dedicated um, website. They can get their pictures, their images on that screen. We'll have a look at that. That's around the first bend, and I'm sure it'll be really interesting for a lot of the athletes. They'll uh, actually get to see all the spectators on that Zoom wall, and it just adds to the atmosphere, doesn't it? <laughs> I can imagine that. I can imagine one of the athletes maybe in the, in the 400 meter start, which is right by that Zoom wall, uh, as you say, on the first bend suddenly sees one of their family members pop up on the Zoom screen just as they're getting ready and focusing in the zone for their uh, their uh, their race. As you say, we'll see that very shortly. I think actually you are, you are able right now, wherever you're watching around the world, to get involved in that. If you go to the event website, the FBK Games website, I think you can get yourself involved in possibly being on that Zoom wall. So it's not too late to be there, literally, and try and catch a, a shot of yourselves in the background but really interesting this men's pole vault the olympic qualifying marks we're going to talk about a lot today of course many of the athletes actually in this men's pole vault actually already have the olympic qualifying standard which is at five meters and 80 centimeters um, but for a lot of the events coming up later on there's a lot of athletes on the cusp of those olympic qualifying marks who haven't quite achieved what they want to achieve just yet and it's, uh, this, this is where the, the World Athletics Continental Tour Gold Jam, I guess, comes into its own because athletes that can't quite get into diamond leagues because they're very limited fields, this is providing high-level competition, great opportunities for athletes to try and get those marks. Yeah, it is. It's a welcome addition, certainly. And the Diamond League standard, yes, of course, that's the best standard in the world. But I've been really impressed with these Continental Tour Golds. They've been as good as some of the Diamond League meets themselves. And it really gives the athletes not just a competitive opportunity, but they can also earn world ranking points, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a lot of detail as we go along. But uh, yeah, a, such a welcome addition, as is this lady here, Safan Hassan taking a few deep breaths. I think whenever she goes on the track these days, she intends to put on a performance. And um, I don't think she would be here, Chris, if she wasn't willing and in the shape to think that she can really attack uh, maybe a personal best, which would be a European record. And how fast can she go? We'll yet to see, but uh, we promise some really exciting fireworks in this one. There's the first page of uh, athletes who will be involved, uh, a big Kenyan contingent. Quite a few from Oceania as well. Obviously, athletes there weren't able to, uh, to get out of Australia and New Zealand for, for quite some time. So the likes of Genevieve Gregson, very experienced uh, national champion, multiple times of Australia, Commonwealth finalist as well, uh, taking the opportunity to get some racing in. Camille Buscom as well, the uh, New Zealand athletes, multiple national champion from, uh, from there as well. The pace uh, in this is going to be set up for Sifan Hassan. There's no doubt about that. They're going to be going for... Well, 215, uh, 256 rather kilometers, 70 second laps, Jen. 
Yes, unbelievable, isn't it? I was actually looking down, we did some calculations earlier, and I think I could just about run 5K at the pace that Sifan Hassan wants to go through 6K, <laughs> and that's when I was fit. So that gives you some sort of indication of the pace that we're talking about. I think I can just about drive it as fast as she can <laughs> run it, uh, given some good traffic. So you can see there we have uh, 17 athletes, uh, two pacemakers right on the outside. Uh, in fact, Andrea Sesafine uh, of Canada, who's uh, spot, what is she, drawn 12 there in the, uh, the navy blue Nike kit. She's actually going to pace, uh, take on the second pacemaker role, but is also going to finish the race. So that's uh, an interesting one, as we see Camille Boscombe of New Zealand. 30 years of age, already qualified for the uh, Olympics, actually, by virtue of the uh, New Zealand Championships having already taken place. And she's got the quality, uh, the qualifying mark as well. There is Andrea Sesafine of Canada, 30 years of age. And again, uh, you know, uh, as well as anybody, Jen, about pacing at, at the top level, it's, uh, it's one thing to pace and then to carry on and finish the race, isn't it? Yeah, well, normally it's frowned upon, but I think Andrea's decided that she would help the second group. So we'll explain a little bit more, but I think Sifan Hassan will be out at the front with two pacemakers dedicated to her pace. There she is, waving at the crowd there, that personal best, 29, 36, 67. And then Andrea is going to take the group round for the second pace, but she does intend to finish this race as well. So we're standing by for our first track action then of the 2021 FBK Games in Hengelo. Can Sifan Hassan, if it all goes well, challenge the 10,000 metres world record? So away and running then, 25 laps of the track. The world record stands at 29 minutes, 17 seconds, 0.45, set by the Ethiopian Alma Zayana in the Olympic final when she uh, raced to gold in Rio, so that is the mark. Sifan Hassan's uh, PB for context when she ran half the race pretty much on her own is 29.36, but she does say, she was speaking yesterday, she says, I've never seen myself in such good shape in terms of my endurance training. So, as you mentioned, uh, Jenny, if she's coming here with so those kind of thoughts in her mind of attacking these kind of times, she will know just how well she's been going. Yeah, well, as she moves up the distance, I think that's something that you have to accept. Your speed won't quite be there. And she has had incredible speed during her career. She's actually got her 800 meters personal best of 1 minute 56.81 seconds. So she says her speed's not quite there. Of course, maybe not 156 shape, but she's running 800 meters already this year, a low key event, two 201, which is very, very quick still. But if you look through all of her times now, you know, she's even run an incredible time, a European record for the half marathon. So her distance, the range of her distances is absolutely incredible. And I think we can forgive her for her speed not quite being there over the 800 meters and, uh, and below these days. But of course, it's been more important for her to improve that endurance. And if she's saying she's in that sort of shape, Oh my goodness, we know that she is. And I can just see a picture there of Jos Hermans. He's one of the meet directors um, on the infield there. So he's always there with the stop clock. I've been a pacemaker at this meeting for Sifan Hassan over the 1500 meters. And Jos Hermans was screaming at me from the infield, <laughs> telling me to keep going. And uh, it looks like the pace has started off really good so far. If you want to get paid, Jenny, run a bit faster, he was shouting. Or words to that effect. <laughs> words to that effect. I don't understand Dutch, but yeah, I think he was. I thought you were going to say for a minute, Jos Hermans pops up on the zoom wall which you might get a shot of when they come around the uh, the first bend so we're aiming for 70 second laps uh, that would be world record pace the other time to worth mentioning is the olympic qualifying time which is 31 minutes and 25 which is being paced by Jacqueline Rotic in the third group there uh, of the uh, the athletes. It's Diane van Es at the front for the Netherlands at the moment with the uh, support alongside of Daisy Cheretic in that leading group as well but you will notice uh, as well the wave light technology, which is becoming a more regular scene now on the international distance running. That's the purple lights you can see on the inside there, this wave light technology, which is at the pace that the pacemakers should be aiming for. And the separate green lights behind are basically targeted for those athletes who are behind the pacemakers to make sure that they know exactly where they need to be. So Diane Van Es following, as you can see, just glancing down, keeping an eye on those purple lights but as we've discussed Jenny when we've been talking about the, the, the wave light technology before very useful for the athletes and particularly useful for the spectators as well in the stadium but these athletes you know glancing down at their watch they know on feel as well how they're going 
Yeah, they do. And I just have to really compliment um, the pacemaker there, Diane Venice. They were asked to do 256, and she returned 256.12. So those lights are definitely helping her. She's keeping the group on task here. But I think this is uh, the first time for a lot of these athletes who'll be using these lights. And they've been popping up at quite a few meetings recently. And as you say, Chris, you know, it really helps as well, the spectators. It really builds the narrative. So they understand what's happening, are they on track, what sort of times are all the athletes going for, and I think there's something that will really get into the, you know, the blood of uh, the athletics world in the next few years, and uh, it's, they're doing a great job so far. So the first two in this group are the uh, the two pacemakers, so Diane Van S of the Netherlands, and behind her, Jacqueline Rotic of Kenya, who will uh, take over a little bit later on. Sifan Hassan currently in third position, the other two athletes in that leading group. Fourth, as you look at them there, that is uh, Joyce Tele of Kenya, and at the back of the, that uh, group of five is Daisy Cheritich uh, of Kenya as well, who set her lifetime best of 30.54 in, in Stockholm just uh, a few weeks ago. So has been racing around the, uh, the European circuit. Tele as well, a 32-minute runner. So uh, unless she's uh, improved dramatically over the course of the, uh, the last couple of weeks, she's going to find this pace a little bit too hot once we get further into the race. But at the moment, she's happy to be in the shadow of the world champion Sifan Hassan and the European record holder. As Diane Van S steps to one side and it will now be the responsibility at the front of Jacqueline Rotich to do the pacing. Yeah, well, Diane Van S ran a fantastic first few laps. Unbelievable, isn't it, that they've gone at this speed and you see that caption, 21 laps to go. And I'm sure Rotich will actually think to herself, wow, this is uh, tough going, but she'll go as far as she can. And uh, Hassan looks very relaxed there, doesn't she? In second place, she does have that relaxed motion. We nice. mentioned the pacing. Sorry to interrupt. We mentioned the pacing, by the way. We, uh, we, you might have caught it on the screen as we went through, but just catching up 1,000 metres, the one kilometre mark, 256.12. Uh, was what they went through and, and the pace was 256 so Dan Vaness as you say was absolutely spot on with her pacing through the one kilometer the next uh, marker we're looking for for world record pace at 2k will be 551 which will be coming around very very shortly indeed as they come around into the home straight and Sifan Hassan actually has decided that she wants to push it on a little bit here because she can see actually that they were just dropping off those wave lights yeah, it was interesting to see that because when Rotich took over the pace a lap ago, she did grimace on her face a little bit, and this is hard going. So 5.51 we were looking at and 5.52.19. So Hassan did just notice, I saw that she came up um, on the shoulder there, and really great that Rotich could find something. She could respond, but Rotich is a true world-class athlete in her own right, and she's having to work really hard just to keep this pace really healthy and uh, it looks like that is as far as she can go. Hassan is out on her own now. Well, she's, uh, what, six and a half minutes into the best part of a 30-minute race, a 29-minute race mainly, and already she's uh, decided that she's going to have to do a lot of this work herself, as she did when she smashed that European 10,000 metres record in Hengelo on this very track in October when she uh, beat Paula Radcliffe's mark of 30.01 by, what, the best part of 25 seconds or so. That was the fourth fastest mark in history, and she had to do most of that herself, but it probably is a little bit easier when you have got those wave light uh, technology on the inside as you can see Hassan doesn't run with a wristwatch he's obviously got the uh, as a lot of athletes don't of course she's got the uh, the clocks on the infield to to help her but it just is that extra focus and she's making sure that she is right in the middle of those purple lights on world record pace oh it's so exciting to see and still 19 laps to go and Hassan is out at the front now and I think she's doing what she does best she's one of those athletes she's very very floaty she doesn't use you know, lose much energy. She's very, very economical. And we can see Jos Hermans there. <laughs> He's placed himself on the inside. And we've seen him over the number of years with some of the best Ethiopian athletes who's been trying to get world records at this historic meeting. He always places himself somewhere and all the athletes love him. He um, is such an encouraging, you know, kind of father figure to a lot of these. But Hassan, you know, I've talked about her range of distance. If I can just compare her to Mo Farah, um, when he moved up to the 10,000 meters on the track, um, you know, he did a lot of kind of mental work so he could keep concentrated. It's a long, long way on a track, 25 laps. 
but because his son has run so so well even over the half marathon 66 minutes there she's run 10615 which is a european record i'm sure she can keep her concentration on this track event and as you say you know those wavelength lights as well i'm sure that's really really helping keep her on track and really interesting to hear the crowd, they're all getting behind her because they know what they're witnessing. They're hopefully witnessing something that we've never seen before, world record pace. She said she was in shape and it certainly looks like she's setting off with good intention and uh, oh, I'd love her to do it. Yeah. Well, we're coming up towards the next kind of uh, marker, if you like, because 8.47 there or thereabouts is the uh, aim at 3K. As you can say, as long as she's sticking close to those uh, wave lights, then she's going to be getting pretty close to it as we uh, stand by for that split. And it is indeed 8.47.91, so it's right on it, as we say, with the lights to, to help her. And she says she's going to, hasn't quite finalised exactly what she's going to do in Tokyo, but she's going to be probably targeting the, the 5K and the 10K because the, the 1,500 and 10,000 double that uh, she did, of course, in Doha is not going to be possible because of the schedule in Tokyo because the 1500 metre heats are on the same day as the uh, the 10,000 metres final. And also, she said, do you know what? I've already done the 1500 and the 10K double, so I'm going to try something different. So that is what she's aiming for, 5K and 10K double. And this is certainly uh, looks like at the moment with uh, about only, certainly a third of the race distance complete. We should mention that, that uh, at the moment she's looking good and she is on world record pace. Well, it was amazing what she did at World Championships in Doha. No one ever has managed to do what she did, winning that 1500 meters and the 10,000 at either the World Championships or the Olympics. So she is the only woman in history who's managed to do that. And despite all her records, every event she's done, it's a national record. Most of them are European records. She's got the world record for the mile but she's never actually won an Olympic medal. Her best was fifth place in the 1500 meters in Rio. And I think she actually took part in the 800 meters there. And I think she got knocked out at the heat. So absolutely incredible with an athlete with the personal best and all the records that she's got, that she actually doesn't own an Olympic medal yet. But looking at the form that she's in, surely, surely it's only a matter of time. 10, nine, 10 weeks away from Tokyo. Let's just hope she can maintain this shape and she can take that Olympic medal. So still 16 laps to go. Not at the uh, the halfway point yet. Sifan Hassan in the pursuit of history in Hengelo at the FBK Games. Mentioning in behind, by the way, we just got a fleeting glimpse a moment ago of that uh, chasing pack who are, what, the best part of probably, we're waiting for them to come into the back of the shot on the uh, the far side. They look like uh, they're at least 100 metres behind, probably uh, maybe a little bit more. But Joyce Ch uh, Tele of Kenya, who's in that chasing group, she doesn't have the Olympic qualifier at the moment. A couple of weeks ago, she ran 32-12. Uh, so she's got the best part of 48 or so seconds to find today. But again, benefiting from, I guess, the atmosphere and having someone like Hassan, although she's 200 metres ahead of you, the atmosphere in the stadium, the, the general vibe, and the, the, we know how fast Hengelo's track is in good conditions. Trying to use all of those, I guess, for the athletes in behind who are chasing the qualifiers. Yeah, you can only feel sorry for all the athletes behind. It's almost a demonstration, isn't it, by Sifan Hassan here. But you have to mention a lot of the athletes who are racing here. We've got some real quality. A lot of these women will be in Tokyo in this 10,000 meters. Some of the athletes in the 5,000 meters as well. And we just got the split there at 4,000 meters, 11.43.33 bang on the time that we're looking for at that stage. There is that second uh, chasing group, by the way, which includes uh, Tele, who I mentioned. It also includes Daisy Cheritich, who does already have the Olympic standard. The other athlete in that uh, trio was Gloria Kite of Kenya, who's uh, one of the training partners of Ronix Kepruto, the world bronze medalist over 10,000 metres. Her personal best, by the way, was set in this stadium uh, in October 2020 when the uh, qualification window was closed last year because of the, uh, the COVID restrictions on competition. But she was 0.17 of a second outside the qualifying time. So I guess uh, the, the, the good news from her point of view is that it wouldn't have counted if she'd made it, but it does uh, hopefully give her confidence to uh, come here on her outdoor season opener over 10,000 metres. She's run a couple of indoor 3Ks as Gloria Kite, who's in the third of those athletes there. Uh, in fact, she's uh, second of those three athletes now, I think, in that leading group. And also, we're just seeing, uh, joining the back of that group uh, as well, another of the uh, athletes from uh, further back, which is Irene Kimais of Kenya as well. So that uh, chasing group is now up to four, with all the pacemakers 
uh, having done their job, certainly in the leading groups anyway, the uh, pacemakers for that second group. Sarah Larty of Sweden is uh, listed as a pacemaker for that uh, second main pack. And also, as you mentioned, Andrea Sekafin of Canada. Both of those already have the Olympic standard, as does Camille Buscom of New Zealand. But everybody else who's capable, the likes of Dominic Scott of South Africa, a look at her, 31.41 she's run this year. She needs to find 16 seconds, very experienced athlete, but she'll be in that chasing group looking for exactly that. But at the moment, all eyes on Sifan Hassan as she continues heading towards the halfway point. She needs to get to halfway in 14 minutes and 39 seconds. But again, without even needing to see the clock, the wave light technology, those purple lights on the inside, that is world record pace. She's keeping her eyes firmly on it. And it is that mental focus that you speak about, Jen, when you're running lap after lap, circuit after circuit, out on your own. Yeah, and athletes have a lot of different techniques. Some of them obviously just tick off the laps. Other people just try to almost remove themselves from what they're actually doing and trying to just distract themselves. So I don't know what Hassan is thinking, whether she's trying to think. We can just say Lati there. She's the pacemaker, one of the pacemakers of this second group. And uh, looks like they're doing well. I think we just saw that there was a water station there on the back straight. It is a long way to run. So they do offer some of the athletes uh, water, but that's clearly not on the mind of Hassan at the moment. And we're just going to get our next checkpoint. We're looking here at 5K at the halfway mark. We're looking at 14.39, and there we are, quarter of a second inside that mark. At the halfway point of the 10,000 metres in Hengelo, Sifan Hassan is on track at the moment for a tilt at the world record that has stood since the Olympic final in Rio set by Almaz Ayana of Ethiopia. She's having to run at 70 second laps. It equates to four minutes 43 per mile for the best part of, well, for 10K, 2.56 per kilometers. For those of you who are regular runners listening and equating exactly the kind of pace she's having to maintain throughout the course of 25 laps of the track. She's doing it all on her own at the moment. She's got some very good athletes in her sights as well, already coming around to be lapping them at only halfway through the race. We saw a glimpse a moment ago of the, uh, the chasing group of Sarah Lati, one of the pacemakers, I think, was just stepping off at that moment and handing over to Andrea Sekafin, Camille Buscom of New Zealand. Certainly, they were just going through the shot in that group. Uh, also, Rose Davis of Australia. There's Isabel Bat Doyle coming through of Australia. All these athletes about to get lapped by Sifan Hassan as she makes her way down the back straight. Well, she's really been rewarded by that real economical pace. She's never been more than, you know, one second outside at any of those target times so far and it's great to, to see an athlete who's at the top of her game be interesting to see wouldn't it if she'd had a seamless preparation as well because she's now based in utah uh salt lake city because of the altitude basically she's now coached by tim robery she's been training in various locations all the way uh, around the world in the last uh, few months in holland itself she was in tenerife for a little bit she's been in kenya she's been in the usa for a limited time uh, as well of course formerly based in portland in oregon but now uh, moving to, to utah with this new setup so you you can imagine it's been a challenge to find training venues and uh, obviously altitude locations as well but she was speaking saying how much she loves park city in utah now and how it's become her new home so if she can produce something like this on the back of a fragmented preparation in terms of it not being ideal then uh, it's pretty scary to think if it had all gone well in terms of uh, if covid hadn't been around and everything had been as planned well, I'm just watching Jos Hermans. He's gone from the inside position on the track to the outside. And how many times has he been at this stadium, at this venue, seeing world record after world record? And could we be seeing another one? It's just really interesting to think, you know, like I say, the depth of personal best that she's got. She's been the European cross-country champion. She's medalled at the world indoors and the European indoors on those tight turns. And now she's got a personal best all the way from 800 metres all the way to that half marathon. So she can bring it on the indoor, on the outdoor, on the roads. And this is a great athlete. We're witnessing one of these moments in history and she is still on target. 17.34, we were looking there. She's just in, just outside half a second away from that target at that point. So well into the second half of the race now, hitting 6K at 17.34. As you say, Jen, still ticking off those two. Dot Hermans is getting closer. He's nearly in lane one. If he gets any closer, he'll be in the way. 
But uh, athletes now, as we see, uh, Rose Davis of Australia just stepping aside, allowing Sifan Hassan to take the shortest route. Hopefully the athletes will do their bit around the track as they realize that Sifan Hassan is approaching. And while they're all chasing their own, uh, own targets, I guess, as well, it would help her if they do just step to one side and make life as easy as possible. But of course, athletes in the zone, sometimes you won't see. Sometimes the crowd noise means you just simply won't see that she's uh, she's coming up around the outside. That's possibly the case with Genevieve Gregson there, who is chasing her own targets. Yeah, all these athletes have got something to run for. You mentioned Rose Davis there of Australia, only 21 years of age. This is her first European season. She ran a personal best over 50, um, sorry, 5,000 meters just earlier in the week, and that was a qualification time. So she's bound to go to Tokyo in that 5,000 meters. And all of these women will be running either for Olympic selections or to try and run a personal best here at this meet. And I think we know straight away it's good conditions, 19 degrees it's not too warm but she's getting frustrated Hassan isn't she there you can see that she's actually saying to Jos Hermans tell some of the other athletes to move out I'm having to run a little bit further now and um... it's a tough one that is I was just about to sort of almost go back on what I said because if you're an athlete here and you are chasing an Olympic qualifying time and you step out of the way for Sifan Hassan and you miss the qualifying time by 0.05 of a second you're gonna be absolutely kicking yourself aren't you you are and you know I don't think it's a disrespect thing I think it actually sounds really noisy in this stadium you know we have got the 1500 fans we've also got um, a cr crowd noise being filtered into the stadium as well to really build the atmosphere we can hear the stadium announcers and to me you know it doesn't actually feel like it's COVID time so I just think it's such a great atmosphere and some of the athletes aren't aware of it and like you say Chris they're running for themselves as well so um, good that Hassan has managed to calm down she looks a little bit more relaxed now and um, Maybe she's just got a stretch of track in front of her. Yeah, I thought she had, so she doesn't need to worry about any traffic for the next 50 meters at least. And uh, let's hope that she can just keep that mental focus, keep driving. This is gonna start hurting now at this point. So the clock is ticking around towards the 7K mark, the uh, bottom right of your screen, 20 minutes and 30 seconds is the marker for 7K. But again, those purple lights on the inside will tell you that she is still right there amongst it. And as all of these kilometers tick off, I don't know if uh, Alma Zayana is watching this as Sifan Hassan hits 7,000 meters exactly on world record pace. The kilometers tick off and every single one that she is still there, I imagine Alma Zayana will just be getting a little bit closer to the edge of her seat, uh, certainly thinking that uh, her Olympic final mark, the world record of 29.17.45, could well be under threat here in Hengelo. Bikini broke the 5K world record, which stood only, uh, which stood after 16 years until Joshua Cheptegei took it in August. That was set on this track. Haile Gebrselassie set the world record in 1998, over 10,000 meters. That also stood for six years in Hengelo as well. So athletes at the very top have come to Hengelo knowing they can get conditions that will absolutely suit them. We know about the shape that Hassan has been in as we see that chasing gr uh, group again, headed by Kim Ice there in the, uh, the black, who doesn't have the Olympic qualifying standard at the moment, so she's chasing 31-25. But even that chasing pack now, the camera foreshortening the angle, they're probably only about 50 metres from getting lapped. She's nearly going to lap the whole field. <laughs> this shows a sort of performance that we're actually being you know, shown today. So privileged to be in this position to watch an athlete at the top of their sport. And a lot of athletes, a lot of the Kenyan athletes in that um, second pack, which you say, Chris, you know, they may well get lapped by Hassan here. They've got the Kenyan trials in just a couple of weeks in Nairobi. So they're coming here to try and get a time. Everyone wants to race in Henglo and we'll see in some of the fields, especially the middle distance fields, they're absolutely stacked always know that we can put on a great meet in Henglo. Ellen Van Langen, we spoke to her yesterday, Chris, didn't we? And, um, you know, she said she doesn't like to turn athletes down. So many <laughs> athletes try and get in this meet. And, you know, she was obviously Olympic champion herself, Barcelona in 1992, over the women's 800 meters, a heroine of mine. And she wants athletes to get this opportunity to compete here. And a lot of the world's best have taken this opportunity. Well, she's uh, within sight of lapping some very, very proficient athletes here is Sifan Hassan. If you're just joining us here on the World Athletics YouTube channel, welcome to the FBK Games live from Hengelo, where Sifan Hassan at the moment is about six and a half minutes away, potentially, from breaking a world record that has stood for almost five 
years to add to her European record. She's the world record holder, as Jenny mentioned earlier on, over one mile, one hour. She's the European record holder at 1,500, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, and the half marathon, an unbelievable range. And here she is about to take down, it would seem, if she can keep this going. And there's not many signs at the moment of struggle. You can see still, looks pretty relaxed, keeping her eye on those wave lights and still right up there with the leading of those uh, purple lights, which are the pace she goes through with two kilometers to go, 23, 25, right on the money still. Yeah, it's very metronomic what we're seeing. And I think that's why she's being rewarded with still looking pretty fresh at this point in that last 2K now. All her laps have been, you know, within half a second of that record all the way through. And it's uh, good that she's passing some athletes on the back straight here. I'm sure she's trying to pass some of them before she gets to that bend. But unfortunately, I think she's got to that bend now and she might have to go a little bit wide. But yeah, four and a half laps to go. Bang on that world record pace. And when you actually watch her, sometimes she can rally in the last couple of laps. So if she can rally to get under that world record and she's not trying just to break it. Remember, she's trying for somebody else for the future not to be able to break her record. So I'm sure she's going to give everything that she's got over these legs four laps to first of all, tick that box and get that world record, but hopefully put it out of sight for the next people who are trying to attack that world record in the future. That's the voice of the six times major medalist Jenny Meadows with us here on the World Athletics YouTube channel. As Sifan Hassan now has completed uh, an entire lap on the whole field. She's gone past everybody. There is best part of what, four and a half minutes left of running here. 29.17.45 is the world record set in Rio in 2016. The meeting record is going to get smashed here, by the way. It was a good night for Ailish McColgan last night as she qualified for Tokyo in the uh, Great Britain 10,000 meter trials. Well, her mum, Liz McColgan, uh, currently holds the 10,000 meters meeting record from back in uh, 1991, which is a very successful year uh, for Liz McColgan at 30 minutes and 57. So, uh, I'm afraid that is going to be in pieces by the end of uh, play today, but I'm sure Liz, having held that record for so long, will be, uh, won't be too sorry to lose it to a performance like this, which if it keeps on moving in the way that it has been, the world ranked number one female athlete across all disciplines. The unique way the world rankings are classified means that all different disciplines across track and field can be ranked together in the same list. And Sifan Hassan currently is world ranked number one above everybody else and still looking unbelievably strong as she comes through with 1,200 meters to go. Three laps to go now. And she's definitely on course to absolutely smash that 30 year old meeting record. 1991 and all the great competitors who's competed here over the years and I'm actually looking at some of the fans on that wall. Can't see Liz McColgan there. We can't see Liz <laughs> McColgan, but I saw Ethan. Ethan looks like he's on the edge of his seat there. He's getting really, really excited. And we're just about to come up with a 9K split. We're looking at 26-21. This will be a real indication. The last marker we're going to see. Oh, and it's perfect, isn't it? Five hundredths of a second outside that. Safan Hassan needs to really dig deep now. Dig deep, just less than... Just a little bit more over two laps to go as she overtakes Davis there, Rose Davis from Australia. I think that's the second lap time. She's uh, lap Rose Davis now, who is Tokyo bound herself in that 5,000 meters. Two laps to go now for Hassan. A steely focus on the Hengelo track underneath her for Sifan Hassan as she now moves to within 800 meters of history. She's due to run the 1,500 meters in the Diamond League in Florence on Thursday night, a mouth-watering contest with the likes of uh, Kip Yegon and Laura Muir as well. Faith Kip Yegon, the uh, world champion. Both of those are waiting for her in Italy on Thursday. Laura Muir is running in this event later on in the 800 metres. But at the moment, it's all about Sifan Hassan. Jos Hermans has been doing his bit on the, uh, the top bend to keep urging her on. She's done this all herself since around about what, uh, two kilometers in possibly when the pacemakers were all, uh, I guess, pushed to one side. And she said, you know what? I'm gonna do this myself with the help of that wave-like technology. 29, 17.45 for the world's number one athlete, the 1500 meters and the 10,000 meters world champion. The first time that anybody had done that world championship double. Sifan Hassan breaking new barriers again. And at the moment, Jenny Meadows, as she comes down to take the bell very shortly, this is looking all on. 
Yeah, I think we're seeing a world record here from Hassan. I'm following those wave, wave light technology and she's ahead. She's ahead now and I think she's pushing on. I think she's actually put a spurt on during that last lap. And this last 800 meters, she's really dug deep and she's ahead of the lights. She's moving her arms, she's digging in. This is Sivan Hassan at her very best. Jos Hermans likes it, the crowd like it. 250 meters to go. This is Sivan Hassan looking for a world record over this 10,000 meters distance. So Sivan Hassan, as you say, pushing herself on now, gritting her teeth, e uh, eking every last drop of energy that she's got now, not just to break that world record, but to really take some seconds off it and make it an insurmount insurmountable mark for other people in the future. It's Hassan then with the support of the Hengelo crowd on home soil at the FBK Games, which we know has produced so many fast times in the future. The likes of Bakili, the likes of Gebri Selassie, and now Sifan Hassan, 29-17, is gonna get absolutely obliterated here. It's another chapter in the history books under the name Sifan Hassan, 29.06.84. Absolutely stunning from Sifan Hassan. Oh my goodness, that last lap was unbelievable. She's absolutely smashed it. Over 10 seconds off a world record. No one should be able to do that. <laughs> she said she was in shape. She wouldn't have arrived here with the intention of running a world record, saying that she could if she didn't think she was in that shape. But even Sifan Hassan, I don't think she can quite believe the overall time that she's got. She was rewarded for that consistent pace and that last 800 meters, she absolutely put her foot down and absolutely smashed the world record to pieces. She's run a 2.45 tenth kilometer there, Jenny. 2.45 at the end of a 10K. Well, she set off running 2.56 and she ran 2.56 for the first nine kilometers and then she sped up by nine seconds. I'd be really interested actually to see what her last lap was. It was around about 60 seconds, it had to be. Well, 29.06.82 is a mark that is gonna be very, very tough for others to beat. Now, keep an eye on some of these finishing times. 31.25, remember, is the Olympic qualifying time. These are the athletes coming through in second and third now. They're gonna be inside the Olympic qualifying mark, just confirming uh, the athletes coming through in second and third. We'll have that for you very shortly indeed. Hassan, the winner, but uh, the athletes finishing now will be inside that Olympic qualifying mark. She still can't believe it. It's Irene Kimais who's come through in second place. That's a big lifetime best for her, an Olympic standard. That's taken the best part of uh, a minute of her previous best as uh, Irene kept uh, Jepkumba Kimais of Kenya. There she is, 30-37, Cheritich coming through as well. She already had the uh, Olympic qualifying standard, but uh, another confidence boosting run. But Sifan Hassan, well, sometimes it's very hard for athletes to set expectations there's in it because unless everything is absolutely right on the day, you know what sort of shape you're in, but you need everything to go right on the day as well. And absolutely everything went right and more for Sifan Hassan today, quite rightly taking the adulation, not only of some of the meet officials and the meet directors there, but these Dutch fans inside the Fanny Blankers Kern Stadion, a lady who made history herself back in the 40s with those four Olympic golds. Well, Sifan Hassan doing it herself today with that 10,000 meters world record. Well, she really is the darling of Dutch athletics. We've had some fantastic athletes over the years, but who can beat this woman? Who can beat this woman over the majority of the distances that she's recorded these amazing times on? But this 10,000 meters, she's absolutely made it around there. And I don't actually think she was that tired. I think she almost thought, you know, she had to go on the floor to take her shoes off and at least look, look a little bit tired. But, you know, proud coach there um, looking on and uh, he'll have seen all the training over the winter, those winter months, those hard months at altitude. This is why you do it. You do it for these rewards. And um, we're just seeing the pictures of her there at the start. She, she did look nervous. She looked like she knew it was gonna be a hard task. She came here for one reason and one reason only was to get that world record. But that last kilometer, she was really rewarded for being so economical, being so consistent, 
that she could absolutely put her foot down over that last 1K. And we just saw what sort of time she got at the end. She couldn't believe it. She knew she was economical throughout. But to come home over 10 seconds faster than the old world record, which was all done in the last kilometre, absolutely unbelievable scenes. Well, that is unbelievable. And I think Sifan Hassan's uh, expression there, as you said, Jen, when she, she crossed the line, was a picture itself. I think she said, what? As if to say, I felt good on the last lap. I thought I'd push it on. Maybe I'd take five seconds off it. She's knocked 11 seconds, the best part of, off the previous time set by Alma Zayana of Ethiopia in that Olympic final in Rio. And don't forget, an Olympic final, and often we see, don't we, that major championship finals, they're not fast. They're often tactical uh, championship races. And that will have been competitive for Mayana with all sorts of athletes uh, pressuring her on the day for the gold medal. Sifan Hassan has run, what, eight tenths of that race completely on her own. Yeah, that's actually really remarkable, isn't it, when you actually think about that. She got help for the first two kilometres, and then from there she had to be on her own. No one's been able to do that in history, so never mind today. But she's great in a tactical race as well, and when you've got the speed that she has, and she's had it in her legs, she's had a 156 in her legs, you know, during her career, over 800 metres, she can dig deep, and um, we know she's got the world record, but she's going to be hard to beat in a tactical race in Tokyo as well. Just to clear up some of the other athletes coming through, by the way, and there was a big gap between Cheritic uh, in third, uh, Kip Kowicz finished in fourth place in 31.46, so uh, no one who was chasing the Olympic qualifiers further down the field. Uh, in fact, as I say that, our, our computer is just refreshing here with some extra results coming in. Uh, it's listing Dominique Scott as uh, finishing in 31.19 uh, with a personal best, so that is uh, very significant for her because that is an Olympic qualifying standard for Dominique Scott of South Africa, but we'll clear all of that up very shortly indeed, so if that is confirmed, that is a huge news for the experienced South African. But this is the pole vault. This is Menno Vloon of the Netherlands, who is the, certainly the closest challenger on paper this season to Mondo Duplantis, who hasn't come into the, uh, the competition as it stands. Vloon here at 5 metres and 50. And making that look pretty easy. It's, uh, again, great for the meeting, great for the Dutch fans to, to have somebody really mixing it with the, the top vaulters, because the Netherlands, with the greatest respect, isn't a nation that is uh, notable for producing pole vaulters. But Mano Vloon, particularly with that jump indoors over the winter of 5.96 in France, that shows what he's capable of on this day. It does, and uh, that was a huge clearance, wasn't it? Well, he is five times Dutch national champion, and he will get a really good competition here. Five metres 80 is the Olympic qualification standard, so he's bagged that already during that indoor season. This is our first look in Hengelo then at Armand Duplantis, who's coming in at five metres and 50. Has had some, uh, some struggles with some lower heights in previous competitions. Duplantis in Hengelo, first time up. Goodness me, I think you could have driven a bus between them and the bar there. That was a very, very comfortable clearance for Duplantis. Confidence booster, even for a guy of his ability and his already notoriety. In success, he's over 550. The only athlete we've actually lost in the competition so far is actually Great Britain's Harry Koppel, who's failed three times at five meters 30. Uh, a, a raft of athletes in this field do have the Olympic qualifying standard. Duplantis has it, obviously, Vloon has it, Thiago Brass, the Olympic champion, has it, Obiena has it, Cole Walsh has it, Harry Koppel also has it, Ben Bruders of Belgium has it as well. The one athlete who would be looking to push up towards it would be Rutger Koppelar of the Netherlands. But uh, slightly surprising to see Harry Koppel go out at such a low height, Jenny. Yeah, he's had a great couple of years. Um, 2019, he bagged that Olympic uh, qualification. And it was great at the British Championships last year to see him get the national record, 585. So yeah, he will be disappointed, but it's great that he's mixing it on this level with these guys week in, week out, which uh, is really important for any young aspiring athlete. Yeah, and again, since the days of Steve Lewis, Great Britain, uh, again, haven't always had pole vaulters mixing it right at the top level. So Harry Koppel, who uh, we can now mention, shares a, shares a club with you, Jenny. <laughs> he does, Wigan. he does. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, part of the, uh, the Great Britain setup under Scott Simpson. Uh, that camp has had a great week with Holly Bradshaw setting a new outdoor British record uh, earlier in the week of 482. But at the moment, Hengelo is all about Hassan. Sifan Hassan, who is 
Uh, Reveling, I think, and what a, what a great moment for her to have done this in a stadium. 1,500 Dutch fans there to see it as well. We've seen so many good performances in, in empty stadiums over the course of the, uh, the last few months or so, but I think it's, it's really nice, really fitting that uh, with the, uh, the safety protocols all in place and uh, the, the COVID restrictions now thankfully relaxed and starting to move in the right direction, that uh, Hassan, I'm sure, uh, a difference was made to her from those fans. There's confirmation of those uh, results a little bit earlier on from the women's 10k confirmation of that olympic qualifier for dominique scott with 31 19 so that's uh, that's huge for her so now come the obligatory photos for sifa hassan next to her new mark i think we're going to be seeing that mark in those uh, in those athletics statistical record books for quite some time 29 06 82 and if anybody was born on that date that will be in your mind forever, I'm sure, that Sifan Hassan set a world record that was exactly the same as your birthday. Just a couple of people younger than us, Jenny, obviously. <laughs> we are, we're now well past it and uh, born much earlier than 82. You're live with us on the World Athletics uh, YouTube channel and joining us uh, around the world. This is Chris Temple alongside the uh, 10 years ago Hengelo champion, Jenny Meadows. I prefer to call it a 10th anniversary rather than 10 years ago. It just sounds a bit more sort of celebratory, doesn't it? It does. It doesn't <laughs> seem that long ago when you say it that way. But, um, wow, I'm still in shock with that finish time. But what I really enjoy is Sifan Hassan looks like she's enjoying herself. I know in previous years she's looked quite tense. But I think this is just an athlete who is just enjoying that purple patch in her career and uh, long may it continue. So it's amazing to think we've had a world record and that's only our first track event of the day in what is a very, very busy schedule. Two and a half hours in total on this international broadcast. And the next up on the track, we're into the sprint distances with the men's 200 metres. And again, the Olympic qualifying mark is of a lot of interest to almost everybody in this field. As we see Chirandi Martini, who actually had a special presentation made to him earlier on for his final appearance today at the FBK Games. The 36-year-old who's been a magnificent servant to Dutch athletics, five times a, an Olympic finalist as well. And he needs to, uh, to find something if he's to have one last tilt at uh, an Olympic Games. Chirandi Martini will go out of lane seven. The only athlete in this field who does have the Olympic qualifying standard is... Isaac Makwala of Botswana, twice a Commonwealth champion at 400 metres. Even Christophe Lemaitre, again, hugely experienced, multiple European champion, Olympic bronze medalist from Rio over 200 metres. He doesn't have the Olympic qualifying standard at the moment of 20.24. Athletes can get in via the world rankings, which again we'll talk a lot more about as we go through these next couple of hours, but getting the standard is a huge tick box. As we meet the athletes then from the outside, Tamir Burnett of the Netherlands, part of the uh, Dutch relay squad for the 4x1. He's currently only in the, uh, he's in the world rankings top 56, which will get him to uh, Tokyo all being well, but chasing that standard. Trandy Martinez's best this year has been 20.84. He's a sub-20 man uh, at his best, but that was uh, back in 2016. There's Isaac McQuala, specialist over 400 metres. Has that Olympic qualifying standard. Just a year junior to Martina at 35 years of age, Isaac McQuala. Esiosa de Salu of Italy. Currently uh, ranked 32 in the Tokyo standings. Out of those 56, he needs the qualifying standard as well. Luxolo Adams, the 24-year-old. So three or four uh, meets so far this year. 20.34, his best. Onyema Adegiga of oh, the Netherlands, the European junior champion over 200 metres from 2019. Set his personal best this year in Belgium. Christophe Lemaitre then, who has had some injury issues, there's no doubt about that. His best this year, well below what he's capable of, 21.36. That's what he's produced uh, outdoors. And on the inside, Solomon Bakari of the Netherlands, who's been uh, a regular at uh, European Championships representing Holland. So this is uh, an interesting event, this, because if conditions are good, 20.24, the Olympic qualifying standard, is within reach of a number of these athletes. McQuala, certainly the favourite in lane six. Luxolo Adams, probably the most likely on form this year. And DeSalo in Italy, so out of four and five. 
those two really having a very good look at the Olympic qualifier. Time for the men's 200 metres in Hengelo. So he focused well on the outside and Martina was extremely sluggishly away and Makwala already up on him and Desalo in the yellow inside and unfortunately Adams has pulled up. That's a shame for him into the home straight. It's Adams out of the race then. Desalo who leads from Makwala. These two well clear at the moment. 20.24 the Olympic qualifying standard as Makwala pulls clear in the end from Desalo. 20.39 with a slight tailwind and unfortunately conditions not quite ripe enough for those in behind and Luxolo Adams Regrettably for him, let's hope this South African champion from a couple of years ago is uh, uh, certainly not injured to the extent. Well, I'm afraid that doesn't look great for, for Adams. When you uh, pull up with what looked like some sort of uh, pull, hamstring, calf, who knows, but not great for him. But Makwala, in the meantime, a thoroughly professional job at 20.37 at uh, probably his, uh, his less specialist distance of 200 metres. Well, it was a significant win in the end, wasn't it? But um, it looked uh, really close until that last 50 metres. And uh, yeah, Adams is having some help getting off the track there. But definitely that 400 meter strength from Isaac McQuala helped him all the way to the end. And one of my favorite athletes actually there, Chandru Martinez. It's actually his 14th time at this meet in Henglo and it'll be his last as he intends to retire this year. But here we go again, everything was happening in those outside lanes. Desalu had it there at that point. He ran a great first 150 metres, but Makwala it was that powered all the way through to the finish line. And I have to say, Chris, 20.37, uh, it's a great time, but absolutely unbelievable that he's the only athlete in that field who does have the qualification time for Tokyo, because there's some big names in that field, uh, none more so than uh, Lemaitre there. Yeah, absolutely, and that's, uh, I guess, uh, the difficulty of the schedule that athletes have had over the course of the last year, not just with their training, but also with uh, competitive opportunities as well, which is why we're seeing several athletes, as unfortunately we see Luxolo Adams of South Africa uh, get being helped down to the finish area, but it's why we're seeing so many athletes competing, you know, very regularly, because they've got to take every competitive opportunity they can, you know, to get the qualifying standard. There's no good saving yourself for Tokyo if you're not going to be there. <laughs> no, and I think we'll see this in some of the middle distance events. Um, a lot of the athletes, uh, one of the British athletes, Ellie Baker, I think this is the fifth time she's raced in 10 days, but if you don't get the time, you're not going to be there. So this is the tactics and the strategy between a lot of people's race plans this year. We saw just a slight tailwind of 0.6 metres per second there, but uh, McQuarrell, the winner, with a, a highly respectable 20.37 from Desalu and Lemaitre. It's an improvement from Lemaitre on what he's produced this year. As I mentioned, 21.43, his legal best mark this year. But Trendy Martina, as we said, uh, sluggishly away, but certainly finishing uh, strongly down the home straight and finishing his FBK Games uh, career in Hengelo, I'm sure, uh, as a very popular member of the, uh, the Dutch team. He's certainly been a, a great servant to them. And Dutch athletics having a, particularly over the shorter distances, and of course we see Fanasan's world record really has having a, uh, a purple patch at the moment, likes of Fem Cabal to, uh, to come later on as well. So we see De Salu there of Italy just reflecting on his time of 20.63, just outside his uh, season's best that he set in the uh, European Team Championships in uh, Celestia just uh, a weekend ago. By the look of it, I think he felt like, Jenny, maybe that he could have uh, gone a little bit faster today. Yeah, certainly he's started his season really well and he had a great first 150, didn't he? But uh, I think the strength of McQuarrie he was always going to come through towards the end. But next off, it's the men's 800 metres, and this is one of the races that we're really looking forward to um, this afternoon. Here's the full lineup, and I'm sure we'll meet the athletes soon. Well, it's almost a preview to the uh, the British trials, isn't it? There with uh, with four of the the top men. The one name you can't see on that list, unfortunately, on Max the Bergen, the, the uh, European under 20 meters. record holder from that amazing run in Ostrava. Uh, a late withdrawal uh, from this. Uh, that's a, uh, a random selection of the uh, the second half of the, uh, the start list there, but a real shame to, to see no Max Bergen today, Jenny. Yeah, Max has just picked up a little bit of a niggle, so uh, I think with that British Olympic trials just three weeks away, it's uh, really, really paramount that he gets there in full fitness. So he did travel to Henglo, just uh, made a sensible decision, I think, just to pull out on the day, but uh, that's our pacemaker on the outside. And from Spain, this is Ordinez. 
Personal best of 143.65. He's got a season's best so far just last week, 145.88. We'll have the French athlete, that's Robert. Van Diepen here. He had a silver medal in the 400 metres at the European Indoor Championships. So we can go over the one lap and the two laps. Elliot Giles there for Great Britain. He ran the second fastest time in history indoors. This is actually his debut outdoors in 2021. Well, I can't almost keep up with the lineup. There's so many athletes in this. He'll be a danger there. Bawoski, the Polish athlete, got a bronze medal at European Indoor Championships. Guy Lermont, one of the British athletes. He'll be looking for a great result today against a lot of his compatriots. Daniel Roden there from Great Britain as well. Had a great through season last year, 144.09. He started with 144.60 so far this year. Carl Lankford, he's been to the World Championships a couple of occasions. He was fourth in 2017 in London. Joe Lobel is there from the Netherlands. He's getting a big crowd, a uh, shout from the crowd there. His best is 145.96 from last year. And here, the sharing a lane with him is Crestan from Belgium. He'll go on the inside. So we have a pacemaker in this one. 50 seconds to 50.5 is the mark at 400 meters. Let's see how quick this one is. Oh, and that's something we don't see very often in an 800 meters. Well, looks like, uh, we saw the recall gun recall. there. We heard the that's recall gun. In an 800 meters, a bit of a collector's so, item. So um, a, a few more moments of meters. nerves and tension for these guys, I'm sure. Watch. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff Whiteman, the stadium. He gets everywhere, Jeff Whiteman, doesn't Starts. he? Stadium it announcer there in uh, Hengelo. The Olympic qualifier mark, by the way, Jenny, worth mentioning sad. again as we uh, see uh, an unsatisfactory start as far as the uh, starter is concerned. It's really easy to see there. It was a bit of a stumble from the pacemaker on the outside, Hutzel, but not enough to uh, able to see. Cause a recall, but either way, uh, as you say, the athletes, uh, as you know better than anybody, Jenny, in 800 metres, getting themselves, uh, I guess, uh, getting the string pulled taut and released, ready to go when the gun is sounded, but unfortunately, not happy with that. The 145.2 is the Olympic qualifying standard. Those of significance that need that standard, Ordonev, Van Diepen, Borkowski, Learmont, Robert of France, Loblers and Crestan on the inside. The likes of Giles already has it, Rowden already has it, Langford has it as well. But uh, Guy Learmont, Van Diepen, and Robert, the most notable who are chasing that standard as we wait to see uh, what exactly was wrong with that start? What couple of the athletes just sorting themselves out? What's happening here? Or well, Doneth is... So I think the starters marks when having a word with Hutzel, who was busy uh, rehydrating. Yeah, there there just was a the slight stubble, wasn't there, for Hutzel, I think, on the outside, which might have caused that. Um, Faulty start, so everybody's all right, and uh, we go again. Well, I'm glad the pacemaker didn't get disqualified. That would have been a nightmare, Hutzel wouldn't it? That would have... Uh, <laughs> Someone would have been getting the drawing board back out, I think. <laughs> that would have ripped everyone's script up. So here we go, take two. Yeah, we can see the green card. That's just a faulty start. So from the inside, Crestan, Loblers, Langford, Robert, Rowden, Learmont, Bukowski, Giles, Van Diepen, or Doneth, and right on the outside of the red, the pacemaker, Hutzel. This time they're away. Well, they're away this time. The we can see the pacemaker the Hutzel. He goes off really sharp on the outside. 50, and a half seconds 50 seconds to 50.5. He's been asked to go through that halfway mark. And we've been told that he's trying to get to 500 meters. And he just glances on the inside there, checks that he's not cutting any of the athletes up behind him. Oh, and he's got some five meters on the rest of the field as Tony Van Diepen moves up into second place there, followed by Rowden, Ordinez. Giles, and it looks like it's gone off at a good pace. Yeah, and the wave light technology also in operation in all the, the middle to long distance uh, races as well, as you can see. So Tony Van Diepen will have an eye on those green lights. They just need to wind it up a little bit because they're just getting away. And Dan Rowden just getting a, a little bit tangled up there as it all just suddenly slowed and concertina together. So it's Van Diepen behind the pacemaker now, joined by Bilkowski, who's one of those who is chasing the Olympic qualifying standard. Rowden now challenged by O'Donnell, who just gives a little bit of a nudge around the outside. Giles trapped on the curb at the moment. Robert, the uh, shorter figure, moving 
around the outside as well. So all of those who are chasing this Olympic qualifying standard are right to the fore. Guy Learmonth now trying to get himself involved as well as Hutzol gets himself right in the racing line, causing all sorts of problems. Yeah, I just don't know when he knew how to actually get out of there, but Robert it is who's gone to the front, and it's quite a slow time at 600 metres, 126. I think back to Max Bergen in Estrava, he went through in 116, so no Olympic qualification standards on the line for this one, but Bukowski it is at the front from Robert. Daniel now in third place, and as Elliot Giles comes on the inside, not much room. What can he do? Bukowski is holding on to it. Robert working really hard. And Bukowski is from Robert, from Giles, from Rowden in fourth place. And I think it was Langford who came through in fifth place. Well, I don't know if there's a better way to describe that than what a mess. That was such a messy race, wasn't it? All over the place, really. They stumbled around at the start, went too slow. The pacemaker got himself, Hutzel, in a right old tangle, ended up getting in the way. Athletes were slowing down into a group, then clipping each other, trying to get out, nudging each other. And in the end, you've got to say, when they slowed down down the, uh, coming onto the second lap, they've blown it, haven't they? Because 1.45.2, the way that slowed a couple of times, looking at the times they've come through in, surely a couple of the leaders there could have got through quicker. Well, I was just watching the face of Robert, the, the French um, athlete, and uh, he kind of shook his head. And, you know, Giles was in agreement. What was that about? I think when you've got a field of this quality and people are chasing qualification times, half of the field, and the other half of the field are just trying to race each other, it was just a mess. And I watched Langford, actually, after he finished, and he looked down at his hand, and I think he's covered in blood. He's got spite marks. So that shows what a scrappy race it was. And... Yeah, with that sort of field, we were looking at that world lead uh, list and thinking that some of these athletes were going to get up into it. But this is a competitive sport. It doesn't always happen that way. So uh, quite a surprise result, maybe. Um, a lot of these athletes might walk away from that thinking, what was that about? But this is what happens at championships. You know, it was one of those tactical races and uh, lessons learned for a lot of the athletes, I'm sure. Well, there was 10 in that, 11 if you include the pacemaker, Jenny. And that, that will beg the question that in an 800 metres, which as we always know is a burn up, and there's always a bit of bumping and barging, is that too many? Is that too difficult for athletes when you are chasing a time? If it's a championship, race or other things where getting across the line first sometimes it's all about tactics and, and where you get yourself in the field but when you're chasing times is that too many people yeah maybe when you're chasing times you know when I was uh, in a field you'd never want more than more than 10 in a race but uh, you know this is what you get a lot of athletes they're high up the world rankings and they all wanted to be in this race it's an historic event like we say and this is our final result so maybe a surprise winning time 147.02 but it was because from Poland who took it, from Benjamin Roberts from France in second place and Elliot Giles, a season's best, it was his opener, I'm sure he'll improve on that many many times as his season progresses. Yeah, from a British point of view, the one athlete who just isn't really making the forward progress that he would need to at the moment is Guy Learmont, isn't he? He's just at the moment finding himself sort of fourth, fifth in the, uh, the, the, the British pecking order there and finishing down the field in a, a time that we know he's capable of, of better. But certainly when you look at the men's 800 from a Great Britain point of view, just because there were four athletes from that country in the, uh, in the field there, with the likes of Roud and Giles and Langford all having the standard, uh, and maybe Learmont to still play a part. Jake Whiteman, of course, goes later. He's specialising in the 1500. Anyway, back to the pole ball. This is Thiago Brass, the Olympic champion. And this is a failure, unfortunately, from Thiago Brass. That was at 5 metres and 62. So uh, another man who is, uh, was a surprise winner, of course, of the Olympic Games in uh, his home country of Rio. Looking to work himself back into some kind of form. Training partner of Ernest Obiena, who's also in this field, the Filipino. Having passed the first couple of heights, Thiago Brass, that was a first time failure at 5.62 for him. We talk about that race being busy and lots of uh, lots of athletes in it, and, and half of the time it is because it is such a popular meet, everyone wants to be there, and as you said earlier, meet directors sometimes find it hard to say no, but the 1,500 metres later is even busier. There are 18 in that, including the pacemaker. Here's Rutger Coppola in the, uh, the pole vault, one of those who needs the Olympic standard of 5.82. This is 5.62, and that's good. And look to have a bit to spare there, first time over. 562 from Rutger Coppola. Yeah, that was a great clearance, wasn't he? He's got a season's best of um, 5 meters 70, a personal best of 571, so he's right up there with what he's done before. And the next bar height will be 574, so that will be a personal best if he can clear that one. 
Yeah, yeah, as you say, 571 is at his best from Belgium uh, a couple of years ago. He's been in and around that this year with, with 570. I know Vloon uh, of the Netherlands has failed once at uh, 5 metres 62 as we move back onto the track. And another of those who has been at the top of her game this year goes in lane five. The world leader, Jasmine Camacho Quinn of Puerto Rico. Megan Tapper on her inside and uh, again a strong Netherlands representation as you'd expect. And it's still the nine athletes on the four. Again, we see the flags in the background there in the uh, Fanny Bankers Kern Stadium just at fluttering. The 200 metres had a, a slight tailwind of 0.6 metres per second. As we meet Efshir Bons, the four times national champion of the Netherlands, who's currently outside the top 40 in the Tokyo rankings that she would need to have a chance of going to Tokyo. Serena Samba Maela of France making her outdoor season debut. She's a 1273 athlete at her best. Zoe Sedney, the teenager from the Netherlands, who's uh, set her personal best this year. She's just outside the world rankings as well. Her older sister Naomi is also in action later on in the 100 meters. Megan Tapper of Jamaica is one of the two athletes who does have the Olympic qualifying standard of 12.84, Pan American bronze medalist. Camacho Quinn though, at 12.32, she ran that back in April, in the peak of the warm American early season, ran that in Florida, over in Europe now, testing herself against uh, some of the best. Elisa Di Lazzaro, the national champion of Italy, who is just six hundredths of a second outside the Olympic qualifying standard with her personal best sit, sit this year. Pia Skrzowska, the European Team Championships winner over 100 metres, a couple of weeks back in Silesia, also within reach of that Olympic standard. Sharona Baka of the Netherlands, 31 years of age. And in Nega, Run on the outside, Anne Zagreb of Belgium, who is ranked 35 in the Tokyo rankings out of 40 places. Okay, just to contextualize that, athletes can be given places without the standard to fill up the quota available. So 40 places in Tokyo are available at this event. The likes of Zagreb, Shukovska, currently in those top 40, but the standard would help. But Camacho Quinn has been setting the standard for everybody else this year with that 12.32 in Florida in April. She's in lane five. Tapper, her biggest threat on her inside in four. Um, pretty even at the, uh, the first hurdle. Camacho Quinn now on tapper. Also, Sedney of the Netherlands that started strongly, but now Camacho Quinn really hurdling fluently in the second half of the race. Camacho Quinn, 12.46, a meeting record, and another super impressive performance from Jasmine Camacho Quinn. Just a shade outside the world leading time she set in April, but 12.44 it's rounded down to for Camacho Quinn, and people like Kenny Harrison will be taking notes. Yeah, that's actually the equal second fastest in the world this year. Only herself has beat that and uh, a meet record as well. And we keep saying about the history of this meeting and something interesting is happening further down the field. I'm sure we'll get to find out really quickly. Uh, the Polish athlete, a personal best, 12.80 seconds and really significantly under that Olympic qualification. But here's Jasmine again. And it really was from hurdle three that she powered away from the rest of the field. Such great flat speed between the barriers. Well, these are great head-on shots. The concentration, the speed over the barriers. And that brought her home and she was really thrilled with that sort of time. Maybe she thinks over in Europe, the weather's not quite as good. So 12.44. Unbelievable when you actually look down in statistics, she's only, I want to say only, ranked world 22nd in this event, which shows how much she's improving in 2021, and she'll be shooting up those rankings as every single meeting progresses.
wind was uh, 0.5 meters per second behind them there a tailwind but as you mentioned Jenny Piers Krzyzkowska of Poland that personal best at 1280 that is an Olympic qualifying mark for her as well and agonizingly for Elisa Di Lazaro who ran very well on the outside of Camacho Quinn for a long way unfortunately uh, finishing in 13 seconds flat but Zoe Sedney again a good personal best for her 1302 just 19 years of age and that she was 45th in the rankings out of the 40 places so that might help her nudge up uh, a place or two towards that top 40. Tiago Brass then in the men's pole oh, God we've seen some excellent performance haven't we goodness me today already. Tiago Brass 562 and he is over well, the second attempt he joins the likes of Ben Bruders who's also over at 562 and and it's John Obiena as well. And then the reigning world champion, made an order for the Vrouw. Attention for the start. We're going to see where it leads to. Back live with Menno Vloon of the Netherlands. Again, 5.62, first attempt. <laughs> Height did he then came down too steeply, so getting his center of gravity in the, the wrong position. Unfortunately, until uh, the last moment. Can't give that bar a right clatter. He's a really muscular athlete, and uh, yeah, that bar came absolutely crashing down to the mat, didn't it? So that was his second attempt at 5.62. So have one more attempt um, at that height, unless he chooses to pass and uh, go to 74, which will be the next bar height. If you're just joining us, we've already seen a world record today here at the FBK Games in Hengelo in the Netherlands, set by the home favourite Sifan Hassan, who took over 10 seconds off the women's 10,000 metres world record, which had stood since 2016. She ran 29.06. 0.82, closing in a 245 kilometer to add that world record to those which she uh, already owned. She owned the one mile world record, she owned the one hour world record, and now she owns the 10,000 meters world record to go with her world title. So business time here for Menno Vloon, the Dutch favorite, who we mentioned was in excellent form with that 596 indoors earlier in the year. He now has got to go over this third time of asking at 562 to stay in the men's pole vault competition. 562. Much better. Much better when the pressure was on for Mano Vloon. Probably feeling the expectation, I imagine, of that Dutch crowd who've come to see him and got a couple of performers as well as Mondo Duplantis today. Yeah, how can he follow what says uh, compatriot Hassan has already done? But yeah, looks like he's really enjoying the crowd behind him there in a lot of these events. They clap you in. Some of the athletes ask for that kind of clapping, that encouragement. And that was a nice clearance in the third attempt at 5.62. National record holder of the, uh, the Netherlands, man from Sandam. 27 years of age, so uh, relatively late developer in terms of uh, pushing up towards the sort of heights that are going to be competitive at a, uh, a major games. But we uh, may have called us mentioned earlier on, he does already have the Olympic qualifying mark from that indoor height of 5.96. Marks, uh, as long as they happen in the qualification window from the uh, summer of 2019 onwards. Indoor marks count as far as Olympic qualification is concerned as we pick up the lineup for the men's 110 meters hurdles. And your spot in the middle there, the Olympic champion in lane five, Omar McLeod. There he is, who his major championship most recent memory was a fall in Doha in the final in the race won by Grant Holloway. As we see Liam van der Schaaf for PB this year from the Netherlands in lane, in lane two, one. Oh, Monga's one of those who could do with the standard, which is 13.32, just, in in just outside three, his personal best. Times. He's in the top national 40 in the rankings. Kern Smet, multiple national champion of the Netherlands. He's got in a bit to find four, to make that standard as well. Devon uh, Allen of the uh, USA, the Olympic finalist, world finalist. But here's Omar McLeod, the Olympic champion from Rio 2016, the world champion from London 2017. Ranked number three this year behind Grant Holloway and his compatriot Rashid Broadbell. The European indoor champion is Willem Belossian of France. 
This is his outdoor season opener. He has the standard uh, as well with Belosian. Milan Trikovic, again, major championship finalist at the Worlds and the uh, Olympic Games. He has the standard as well. The national record holder of Kuwait, Yakub Al Yuha, is in lane eight, also making his season opening performance today. And David King of Great Britain. David King. That was from uh, Plymouth in the West Country of England, but racing for the Phoenix Track Club. He's the European Team Championship silver medalist from a couple of weekends ago. He needs the standard as well of 13.32. But Omar McLeod, he's seen Grant Holloway in terrific form. The likes of Daniel Roberts coming back to form as well. 13.23 Roberts ran last week. As I mentioned, his compatriot Rashid Broadbell has been laying down excellent times as well. So Omar McLeod in Europe to show his rivals what he's got in the defense of his Olympic title in a couple of months from now. Van der Schaaf on the far side, Monger in two, Smet three, Allen four, McLeod, Belosian, Trikovic, Eljuha and King. Oh, Mama McLeod out very well indeed. Also alongside him, Allen. McLeod though by a metre at the moment from Allen and Belosian outside him. Omar McLeod moving away from the field. 13.10 impressive from Omar McLeod. His fastest time of the year for the Olympic champion. 13.08, it gets even better for him actually when it's uh, rounded down. Omar McLeod, season's best. Ahead of Devon Allen in 13.32 in second. Well, he enjoyed that, didn't he? 13.08, that second, just one hundredth of a second behind Grant Holloway on this year's World Outdoor List. The fastest time in the world for Omar McLeod. Devon Allen. Plenty of smiles from him there. So just looking down the list, Devon Allen in second place, 13.32. And it was Belessian from France who got a season's best of 13.34 in third so place. Really Kern no Smet there celebrating a uh, PB as well of 13.50. Taken away a mark from about three years ago, but as we Jamal see the, uh, the repeat, the, re, uh, the rerun, Omar McLeod is at the first hurdle first and well, he clipped it. Never really looked back from there. No, he didn't. And I remember Colin Jackson um, always saying, you know, try and get to that first hurdle in first place. And he got there by a stride, didn't he? Already in that short run up. And he just ran away from the rest of the field. You can hear all the hurdles clattering behind him. He touched a few, didn't he? But uh, none seemed to land on the floor, which was significant. And uh, yeah, 13.08, he's really pleased with that. That's 300 of a second faster than what he ran in California last month. And 13.08, again, probably all the more impressive for the fact he wasn't really pushed there either by uh, anybody. Devon Allen, 13.32. Uh, There's a, a large raft of American high hurdlers who've got the Olympic standard. So the uh, US trials are going to be fiercely competitive as they are in so many events. But Omar McLeod, 13.08, right on the coattails of Grant Holloway, as you say, Jenny, on this year's world lists. Well, these spectators have um, been treated to some great performances, haven't they, already? And we've still got over an hour of action to come from this meet. Lots going on. We've got the men's pole vault going on. We've got the women's discus due to start shortly. This looks like it's the men's high jump, and we've got the men's long jump as well. This is the men's high jump. This is Maxim Nedetakao of Belarus, the European silver medalist from 2018, recently won the European Indoor Championships in uh, Torun. So recently, we're uh, going back a few months now. now the outdoor season is uh, well underway, but Nedetakao, who's got the likes of Derek Druin, the Olympic champion, Alongside him, Gianmarco Tamberi also in the uh, the field today as well. Brandon Stark, experience of uh, Donald Thomas, the up-and-coming Belgian Thomas Comois as well. Also jumping today. Well, we're back to the track and the men's 800 meters was absolutely full of drama earlier on. A very, very messy race. What will the women's 800 meters throw up for us? Well, less drama, hopefully, Chris. I don't know if our hearts can take it. Uh, yeah, such a messy race, that one. But uh, this is another quality lineup in the women's 800 metres event. 
we'll get to see the competitors soon. But another busy one, lots of uh, athletes sharing lanes, as we're used to um, on these high-profile meetings. This is Saka on the outside. She'll be taking the pace. So the pace is 57.5 seconds to 58 seconds at 400 metres. And she's hoping to take the field round to 500 metres. Hannah Green from the US. She shares the outside lane. A 158.10 competitor at her best. Ellie Baker, this is an athlete who's had such a breakthrough this year. Just four hundredths of a second, agonising four hundredths of a second outside that Olympic qualification. We say there from Australia, she won the Australian Olympic champion um, qualification. So she's on the plane to Tokyo. Gemma Riki, her training partner Laura Miorgo is in this one as well. Another breakthrough year for her last year. She's ranked the third fastest time in the world so far this year. And what about this young lady? She surprised everyone in Doha at that World Championships two years ago, taking that title on that occasion. Well, Lamotte, she had a great race on Tuesday evening. 158.65, the fastest time she's run for a number of years inside that Olympic qualification time. Adele Trace has been going well, raced a few times on the circuit in the Aust um, America. She's got the qualification bang on the nose, 159.50. Laura Muir, just a couple of hundredths outside her personal best already this year. 355, 1500 metre performer as well. And we're seeing Umels there. She's from the Netherlands, four times national champion. Hedda Hind from Switzerland, 158, 10 personal best. An abundance of riches and talents in this uh, field. And Vandalis from Belgium and Sloot from the Netherlands will share the inside lane. It's a season opener for Halima Nakai, who, as you mentioned, Jenny pipped the likes of Raven Rogers and RJ Wilson to that uh, World 800 metres title. Laura Muir stepping down to 800 metres against uh, Gemma Riki for her more specialist distance. Pacemakers are on the outside. Well, the pacemaker Saka, 57.5 to 58 seconds. She's been asked to go out in, and I can see that uh, Gemma Reek has started really well there. And Laura Muir, we don't normally see Laura starting very fast. We're normally used to Laura making her way through the field. She normally comes on the home stretch on that first lap after around about 300 metres. But she's got herself out there in fourth so position so far. And it's Riki, Lamotte, Baker. Ice. Baker needs that Olympic qualification time. She's not here to hang around. Riki, Laura Muir on the, on the inside there. there Nakai on the outside of Baker. And I always know the time, around about 300 metres. I think the following pack look like the more 58 to 59 seconds, actually, rather than that 57.5 to 58. So is this going to be a messy race just as a men's? And I'm going to say perhaps it is. Well, 59.18 seconds. It looks like this is one of those races where all the athletes are just trying to race each other rather than go for those times with 300 metres to go. It's Riki from the Mott from Baker. She doesn't want a tactical race. She wants a fast one and 300 metres to go. Britt Ummels in the Netherlands just on the outside in the purple. Adele Tracy now right on the left of shot trying to make some progress as well. Laura Muir just tucked in behind traffic at the moment. Ellie Baker uh, tra trapped on the curb as well. Hasn't got herself in a great position but it is Gemma Riki as we like to see uh, as she likes to see herself leading from the front. Ronel Lamotte as you say has been in excellent form. Ellie Baker running well after a very busy schedule. Ummels, Tracy Muir, Nakai still tucked in mid-division the world championship presses go and switches to the outside Nakai so it's Riki gritting her teeth pumping those arms down the home straight Baker's going really well on the inside Lamotte in third place really trying to come past Baker there and look at Laura Muir fast finishing on the line from Riki who punches her hand in the air from Muir Baker I think it was who came third just ahead of Lamotte well oh, Gemma Riki got herself to the front and wasn't passed. Laura Muir steaming down the outside again and the, the sharpest of the events that she will take part in. But as you say, two minutes, 0.77 in the end, rounded down for Gemma Riki. So for the handful of athletes who were chasing that standard, it was evident from uh, pretty early on 
that that wasn't going to be on for those athletes today. But Riki and Muir, and a good scout for Gemma Riki, regardless of the fact it's Halima Nakai's uh, season debut, she's just beaten the world champion. Yes, uh, Nakai was that surprise winner, wasn't she, in 2019, but she raced so well um, the rest of the season and in 2020 as well. But look at Gemma Riki here. Look how determined she is. She's pumping her arms all the way to the finish. She'll be aware that Laura Muir will be chasing her down that home straight. Lamotte just backed off then, and I think maybe Ellie Baker came through from third place. A great race from her, and it was a significant um, fast time from Lamar on Tuesday night in France. She bagged her Olympic qualification time. But these two women, they've been running some great times, taking some great victories over the last couple of years, and no different this year. Let's see if we can uh, just about hear what they were saying in the background there. You thought you could still get her, or you started too late on the final stretch? Yeah, yeah, I think they're fast. talking about the rivalry, so hopefully you can hear that. Yeah, really happy for my race as well, for the two of us to come on too. It's really good. It must be fantastic bonus interview there with uh, Gemma Riki. That wasn't uh, spe specifically part of our program for you, but confirmation there um, that that result I don't think is correct because uh, certainly Ellie Baker finished third, didn't she, or very close to third. So the fact she's not on that list, uh, she was a late entry, uh, stepping in I think for, for Keely Hodgkinson, who unfortunately was uh, listed to take part, but had to pull out with a, uh, a slight niggle as well. So uh, Ellie Baker will wait for confirmation of her time, but uh, that certainly wasn't the correct result. Uh, below, Riki and Muir, who finished one and two. This is the Olympic high jump champion, Derek Druan of Canada. It's not Brandon Stark. Here he goes. It's a failure for Derek Druan at two meters and 24. Competition's few and far between for Derek Druan. He really is working his way back from a, a long absence. He's only had five competitions since the end of 2017. Derek Druin as he tries to, in fact that was his final attempt at 2.24, so that's a, a very disappointing competition for the Canadian, matches, uh, or didn't in fact match what he's produced already this season, so again, not showing any, any sort of form that would have the likes of Barshim et al worried. This is definitely Brandon Stark, the Commonwealth champion at 2.24 as well, and no, so some of the top names just finding it difficult in Hengelo. Yeah, these are athletes who uh, have PBs up in the, uh, the high 230s. But for Brandon Stark, competition over. There are any cricket fans amongst you. It is one of the more well-trodden high jump stats that Brandon Stark is indeed the brother of. Mitchell Stark, the Australian uh, fearsome left arm bowler, who I'm sure will be playing a leading role in the Ashes. Gianmarco Tambre, well, it used to be about the beard. He's given his hair a bit of jish for this one. The world indoor champion from a, a couple of years ago. This is his season debut. And for him, 2.24 is also a bridge too far. Another one who uh, really has got an Olympic story, I guess, to, to try and tell, because he was heartbreak for him when he was injured in the run-up to Rio. He was attempting 241 when he got injured in Monaco in the run-up to 2016. But the Italian record holder, who is due to take on Barshim in his homeland in Florence in the Diamond League on Thursday, Neda Sakao, 224 for him as well. The European silver medalist from Belarus. The, uh, I'm going to say the least close attempt. I'm not going to say the worst, because he just absolutely plowed straight through. Yeah, this is a height that all of these men would presume they would be clear at, but it's uh, definitely testing a lot of them. An interesting jacket there. Well, that is Jamaka Tetberi all over, isn't it? <laughs> he is a, a flamboyant character to say the least, but then he'll be looking to do his talking with his jumping and at the moment. On his season and debut today, outdoors though, always good to get a competition under your belt, but certainly would have been looking for uh, greater heights than he's produced there. So this has been a, a relatively low level high jump competition, despite the fact you've got some of the top international performers involved. The likes of Druin, Stark, Tamberi, Jamal Wilson, uh, Thomas Comwa as well, Harry Koppel, uh, Excuse me, wrong vertical jump. 2.24, all failing at uh, three attempts at 2.24. Neda Sakao, 
the only athlete to clear it, in Thank fact, which is why he got a little bit of a handshake there a moment ago from Tamberi as the victor in the competition. Back we go to the uh, pole vault. This is Ernest John Obiena of the Philippines. 5.74. First attempt for the Filipino. And a good one. So he moves uh, up in the competition. Seem to uh, be over that pretty comfortably from that angle, not the most helpful uh, angle from behind to see the clearance of the bar, but Obiena over 574. Mentioned we lost Harry Koppel of uh, Great Britain earlier at uh, 5 meters 30. Back we go to Menno Vloon, who took three attempts to get over 562. The Dutch record holder, this is 574. And he suddenly is clicking into gear. And he celebrated uh, before he landed on the bed there. And I think athletes just know, they know from when they uh, release the pole there, whether it's a good one or not. And first time clearance is 74, despite needing three attempts at 62. If he gets this, he goes into the lead. Well, as you mentioned earlier on, Jen, it just shows you the pole vault. You know, Mondo Duplantis is one of the slighter figures, isn't he, in the, in the pole vault? That it's uh, it's all about timing and uh, rhythm and everything else that, that comes into pole vault. As we see Duplantis, 574 for him as well at the first time. And as you'd expect as well, Mondo Duplantis is clear. So we've got Obiana clear, we've got Vloon clear, and we've got plant is clear at the first time of asking Tiago Brass has passed at 574 so five athletes still live in the men's and pole vault and just seeing uh, on our computer that uh, Duplantis has passed games. at 580 as well so that will be the next bar height which is the Olympic qualifying standard by the way all of the athletes still in the competition though already have that qualifying standard so it's uh, meaningless in terms of today's competition but Duplant is looking to, back, to get back to winning ways after that defeat by Sam Kendricks, ending that 23-meeting winning streak in the wind and rain of Gateshead in the UK, which uh, will be returned to later on in the, uh, the summer in the Diamond League, with London unable to stage its Diamond League event this year. Gateshead will be getting two stabs at uh, trying to provide some good weather. If they let us down again, we're not going back. <laughs> they were shocking, weren't they? Um, all the images that we saw of that one. And uh, I'm sure Duplantis won't be in a, in a rush to go back, but, uh, or maybe he will. He wants to uh, go back to Gateshead and uh, put that record straight. Harry Koppel earned a bit of fame that day as an umbrella holder extraordinaire. But no such problems. Sun, sunglasses, although they're not currently in operation, they've uh, certainly been handed out today. They're expecting some good weather in Hengelo. It's shirt sleeve order, though, for the, uh, the braver members of the, uh, the crowd. We'll pick up the women's discus, which includes the double Olympic and world champion Sandra Perkovic of Croatia, who's going to have a bit of competition for the likes of Denia Caballero, who we're seeing here from Cuba. And that's a very helpfully labelled Q line. Is at 63 metres and 50. So again, that's a, to me, that's a relatively basic, uh, I guess, uh, event bit of dressing, if you like, that they would put in a, a qualifying line, as simple as that, and well done to the organisers of this meet. So 62.46 for Caballero, who does have the Olympic standard already, but 63.50 is where that uh, is at. Sandra Perkovic uh, has fouled on her first couple of throws, actually, so uh, yet to register a mark. The leader is, at the moment, Jaime Perez of Cuba. Men's 400s next, though, on the track. As we meet on the outside, first of all, the Swiss athlete, Ricky Petrucciani, multiple national champion of Switzerland, said his best a couple of weeks ago in Germany of 45.9. Here's another of the British athletes who's got some work to do. Matthew Hudson-Smith, a European champion. As you can see there, world ranked 13, but well below that in most of his races so far this year. Needs the standard. Joachim Dobba of the Netherlands. Popular character, regular in their successful in relay squads. What about this guy? Fred Curley, world bronze medalist over 400 metres in Doha. Been tearing it up over 100 metres, running 9.91. Lost to Michael Norman recently over 400 metres. So we see Limavin Bonavassia of the Netherlands. 
Another one who needs the standard of 44.9. As a PB under that. Zakiti Nene of South Africa set his personal best of 45.03 this year in his native Johannesburg. He's got to find a tenth of a second. Terence Agard, another of their relay medalists. 31-year-old, 46-94 this year. And on the inside, Karol Zalewski of Poland. Who's making his season debut. We are He'll be a 45-11. So Fred Curley, the only one in the field with the Olympic standard. There he is. And certainly again with the likes of Michael Norman and others. Throwing it down this year. Fred Curley has certainly caught people's eye with his 100 meter speed over his more natural 400 meters. He's in lane five. Interesting to see what Hudson Smith of Great Britain can do out of seven. Well, Fred Kearney uh, in finishing behind the likes of Michael Norman in Doha ran 44.6 and is already up on Joachim Dobber outside. Hudson Smith has gone off strongly, one from the outside, and he's already passed Petruziani. So Curley and Hudson Smith to the four as they go through halfway. Hudson Smith having to do the hard work on the outside in seven, knowing that Fred Curley will be coming inside him. Dobber between the two in third, and Nene of South Africa right on the inside trying to get himself involved. But it's Curley around the curve. Hudson Smith on the outside, Nene closest to the inside rail, but Fred Curley at the moment now, moving clear, unchallenged, Hudson Smith going backwards, Dobber coming through, Nene of South Africa, Fred Curley though, keep an eye on the clock, 44.6 he ran in Doha, this is going to be quicker is it? No, just outside, 44.77 for Fred Curley, but still, again, very impressive. He's a little bit frustrated. It shows when you're frustrated with a 44-7-4 run. But Fred Curley takes the victory ahead of the fast-finishing Dobber. Well, I'm just looking at second place there and uh, Dobber 45.51. He's looking at that Olympic qualification of 44.90. I thought he ran great. He was really strong there in finishing in second place. But here's the last 100 metres once again. And Curly is just doing a few breaths, isn't he? Blowing out of those uh, cheeks. Grimacing a little bit as he comes to the line and uh, doesn't uh, take too long to decelerate. Right. doesn't look that impressed with 44.77, but that's a time that nobody else in this field has managed to achieve this year. Well, it's, uh, again, maybe he wants, maybe he felt he was in the shape to come and make a, a real statement, and I'm not disparaging 44.74 at all, but Fred Curley, we know, is, uh, is capable of uh, better than that. His PBs are second faster than that, and I think by the look of his face, and again, we, we talk about athlete expectations, he thought he was going to produce something a bit faster there. Joachim Dobber, that's a, a good run from him, just outside his personal best but unfortunately for him uh, no standard that he was looking for and it's looking difficult for Matt Hudson Smith of Great Britain isn't it the European champion he's got it all on to make this team because at the moment he's well short of where he needs to be yeah he started well in lane seven but it was a difficult lane wasn't it with uh, you know all the action going on inside him with uh, Dobber and Curly in lanes five and six but uh, yeah, that last 100 meters, he did come from third place and slip back to six. So lots of uh, running to be done in these next three weeks to get that qualification time, 44.90, something that he's been well capable of in previous seasons. Another thing worth pointing out as well as we talk about world rankings and athletes being invited on the basis of their world rankings. And sometimes athletes, you know, they, the standard might be out of their reach, but actually the world rankings uh, sometimes positions the top 40 is within their reach. So that is a route to the Olympic Games. As we see, Nedesaka, who we've already mentioned, is the uh, high jump winner. Unfortunately for him, that was his final attempt at 2 meters 30. So his winning height was 224. He was the only man to get over that pretty modest height. Maxime Nedesakao and the Belarusian takes the victory. But just going back to those uh, the world rankings, Jenny, the other thing to say is that if people are in the top 40 or, or 56 or whatever it is for that particular event, because it's a different number for every event, there's also no guarantee that their national federation will take them, uh, some, some for financial reasons and for performance reasons. It won't be automatic that if somebody's in the world rankings top 40 and is offered a place by World Athletics, that their country will take them up.
No, that's right, and that's happened in previous seasons at different championships that the World Athletics do offer the places, and it's up to the national federations to decide their policy, really, whether to select that invite or not. Of course, the, uh, the much more simple way of getting yourself in is to have the standard, and if, if your country's rules are that you come in the top two, for example, at the, uh, the national championships, for which for most countries, uh, apart from those who've already taken place, for example, in Oceania, uh, the national championships on the horizon now towards the end of this month uh, and some very very competitive national championships they will be as athletes try and uh, get those spots at the delayed Tokyo Olympic Games we are live from Hengelo in the Netherlands the eastern edge of the Netherlands towards the German border close to uh, Enschede and we move back to the women's discus and this is Liliana Saar who uh, has been in good form this year. The Portuguese athlete already has the Olympic standard. She's the fifth furthest thrower this year. Is Saar. This is round three. And over that Olympic qualifying mark that she already has, so that's heading out towards the 65 meter mark for Liliana Saar. Perez of Cuba has got, gone over 65 meters on a couple of occasions today. Sandra Perkovic, the defending Olympic champion with a couple of fouls, 65.07 for Liliana Saar in round three. That has her in second place overall. The furthest thrower in the year this year, um, on the world list this year, is actually a, a Dutch athlete who's not involved in this competition, Jorinda van Klinken, who's thrown 70 metres this year. As we see Jaime Perez of Cuba, 65.50 in round two. Can she improve on that? Going to be close again to that uh, 65 meter line for Perez, who threw uh, almost 69 meters in uh, Cuba a couple of weeks ago before traveling over to Europe. The world champion from 2019, Perez, in Doha. Now 65.57, a marginal improvement. She is the overall leader, though, at the halfway point of the women's discus. We stay then over the one lap as we move to the women's 400 meters. Again, some of the uh, regular Dutch one lap athletes involved in this, the likes of Lieke Klava in lane four. But we meet first of all, Lada Vondrova, the uh, European under 23 silver medalist from the last staging of those competitions. Olympic standard in this is exactly on her personal best. 51.35 is what Vondrova is looking for. Lavia Nilsson had a, uh, a tough run in that Samarin. She actually didn't finish in the end. She'd been carrying a little bit of a niggle and uh, in the end decided to call that one a day halfway round. So uh, a big test for her fitness-wise today. Phil Healy of Ireland, a national record holder at the shorter sprints. She needs the Olympic standard. Personal best this year of 51.50. Cynthia Bolingo already has the Olympic qualifying standard. She set her personal best of 50.75 this week in Montreux in France. Lieke Klava, she ran 51.71, her season's best in Montreux in France this week. Capable of uh, sub-51 at her best. Inside her, she's got Ari Boquesa, the 10 times national champion of Spain. Just outside the top 48 for those Olympic places at the moment in the world rankings. Lozana De Vitter has the Olympic qualifying stand, the European bronze medalist from 2018. And on the inside will be Eva Hovenkamp, another one who represented the Netherlands at the uh, recent World Relays in Silesia in Poland. So Phil Healy of Ireland in lane six needs the stand and has, and has been close to it this year. Vondra right, right on the outside needs the standard. Bolingo's been going well. And Lavia Nielsen testing a slight injury in lane seven for Great Britain. Thank you. 
But the good thing about 400 meters is you can have a bit of tunnel vision and you can set out to execute your job exactly knowing what you've got to achieve on the day. Clava already up on Bolingo just outside her. Phil Healy running steadily in lane six through this first 200 meters or so. But Clava looking strong. Bolingo going with her as well. Healy will start to get going and uh, use her strength in the second part of the race. But it's Bolingo from Clava at the moment. Vondrova on the outside. Lavia Nielsen also running strongly for Great Britain in lane seven as well as Healy now starts to try and come through. But it's Clava and Bolingo into the straight who lead. They've got three or four meters on the rest. Healy, Nielsen and Vondrova on the outer lanes as well. Cynthia Bolingo now as Clava starts to fade. Lavia Nilsson looking really strong, coming down the home straight. That'll be confidence boost for her as they come up to the line. Cynthia Bolingo takes it. Nilsson maybe just with the momentum ahead of Clava on the line. 51.18 for Cynthia Bolingo. The Belgian takes it. Well, Bolingo will be really pleased with that one. A huge personal best just earlier in this week. And that's actually a second best time. She's coming into shape just ahead of those Belgium Olympic trials. And we can just see the caption at the bottom there. Nielsen came from absolutely nowhere, didn't she, with a storm in last 100 metres to overtake Clava there from the Netherlands by two hundredths of a second. Well, I think Olivia uh, Nielsen will be happier than she looked there on the uh, on the, the caption because she certainly had some uh, some concerns about uh, this busy spell of competing when you've got a slight niggle, uh, having a niggle in Olympic year. But look how far back she is here and where she comes from in lane seven, Olivia Nielsen. But Bolingo, really with with Clava for company all the way round, but just at the last 50 metres or so, looking strong. And Olivia Nielsen really did make some inroads, didn't she, in those last 20 metres or so? It's a real interesting race to watch because Clava has the 200 metre speed and she has to go out. She has to get herself in that lactic acid debt. You know, she can use her speed early on. And Bolingo did actually, you know, pace the race a little bit better, maybe. But uh, Nielsen, I think the way she finished, she'll take a lot of confidence from that going forward. So uh, fitness test passed, I would say. Yeah, I think you're right. And Phil Healy, unfortunately, 52, 58 for her still uh, remains with an agonizing reach of that uh, Olympic standard. But yes, Lavia Nilsson, her season opener was in Gateshead at 53.96 in that uh, horrific headwind and conditions of the her second run where she didn't get round. So I think from that point of view, she's got to be really happy with that. Her twin sister, Lena, actually goes in the 400 meters hurdles in our uh, closing event a little bit later on. But excellent performance from Bolingo. As we go back to the pole vault, this is Thiago Brass, the Olympic champion. Third attempt at five meters and 80, having passed the previous height, and that is an abort. So Thiago Brass, unfortunately for him, his competition is done with a clearance of five meters 62, which has him in fifth position overall. We still have five athletes, uh, correction, four athletes uh, live in the competition, but no longer Brass being one of them. Mondo de Plantis, 5.86 for him. 5.90 is his season's best. We mentioned the world lead is held at 5.91 by the American Chris Nielsen. De Plantis, first time, 5.86 for the world record holder. Just looks to be clicking for Mondo today. Again, maybe again, not quite as much breathing space as he would like coming down past the bar, but still. Look at the scorecard. As long as it's an O and not an X, he'll be happy. Although a man of his high standards and his high technical attention to detail, people can often find faults with what to the rest of us look to be a particularly successful attempt. But Duplantis is the first man clear at 5.86. It's great, isn't it, still to have four men uh, live in this event at 5 metres 80 and above. And it's John Obiena of Philippines looking to make new history for his country. This is his third attempt, as you can uh, see, at 5.86. His best this year has been 5.70, which he set actually earlier in the week in Gothenburg in Sweden. Another uh, meeting that had quite a lot of excellent performances. Like some creative socks as well, a bit like Noah Lyles, although he's changed his mind now, hasn't he, and goes for the, uh, the calf sleeves as we were talking about on the previous World it's Athletics Continental Tour Gold races, meeting. Maybe Abina's uh, spotted his chance there. Uh, he can take over on the sock <laughs> war. King of socks. So Obiana, 5.86, third time of asking to stay in the pole vault and join 
Duplantis, I can tell you, Mano Vloon has passed at 5.86 after first time clearances at 74 and 80. Fabiano not happy at the moment with uh, either his grip or uh, I was going to say the grip or the wind, but the judging by uh, going for the chalk, it will be the grip. So, Ernest John Obiena, the Asian champion, happy to take the crowd's enthusiasm and encouragement in Hengelo. Live with myself, Chris Temple and Jenny Meadows, the six times major medalist over 800 metres. Watching on with you on the World Athletics YouTube channel and wherever you're joining us around the world in the Netherlands. Last attempt. No, not the quickest on the runway, is he, uh, Obiena? Uh, unfortunately, didn't get uh, anywhere near what he needed there. So his clearance of 5 metres 80, which currently has him in second position on countback ahead of Vloon, but Vloon still in the competition. So the passed at 5.86. So, men's 1,500 metres we'll uh, will be next on the, the track. Outside. That is the first page of just the 18 who start in this one, Jenny Meadows. Yes, a busy race this one. Very much like we've seen in the men's and the women's 800 metres. Stacked, I would say, with five men um, in the top 20 and the world rec um, rankings so far this year. So there is that the busy lineup. So Akbash of France on well, the outside there. The He's got the job of pacing the athletes round. He's trying to get to 800 metres in 1 minute 52. And he'll try and go an extra 100 metres to 900 metres. So the pace is being set at 3 minutes 30. That's Fondes from Spain. See the world ranking there. I think a lot of fans are just getting used to these world rankings now. 15, Jake Whiteman's just been announced to the crowd as well. He won the 800 metres last weekend in the Super League in the European Team Championships. 800 metre personal best, 144.1. 1500 metres, 329. There he is. Jake Whiteman, big year ahead for him. Fifth place in Doha Kenya. two years ago in the 1500 meters. He'll be Spain, looking to achieve a similar position or better, of course, in Tokyo. Then him 10, a world championship finalist and a Commonwealth Games gang there. Kenya, Ronald Kwemoy. And just everywhere you look, so much quality in that race. 3.35.00 is the qualification Spain, time that they're Gomez. looking for for Tokyo. But this pace of this race is supposed to go out at 3 minutes 30. So that's going to give them a really good chance, Chris, if some of them can get on the back of uh, the coattails of the pacemaker and the first group. Well, we've already seen a, a blazing run of uh, 3.31.5 by Josh Kerr of Great Britain, a US all-comers record out in the, uh, the US in Portland earlier on in the week as well. We haven't even mentioned some of the sprint performances from yesterday. shelly Ann Fraser-Price and Trayvon Bromel. Some unbelievable performances, but this is the men's 15 in Hengolo. So, wave light technology is back. So, this will be difficult during this first 100 meters for everyone really just to find a space to run. But it looks like the pace has gone off. The pace has found his way to the start, so that's always the first thing that we look at. And then you can see behind, you can see the group almost reluctant. Any, no one actually wants to take the lead behind. It's Ronald Kremoy who's eventually come to the front of that. Jake Whiteman in about third position at the moment, just behind the second of the Kenyan athletes, Abel Kipsang, Richard Delma of the Netherlands, all in black, tucked on the inside uh, as well. Ronald Musagala, the Ugandan world ranked number four, just moving himself out. Charlie Grice of Great Britain running in the white of the Brighton Phoenix Club as well. He's in sixth position behind the pacemaker at the moment. And Charlie Grice actually is uh, the top ranked British athlete this year with his 330.6 he ran earlier on in the year. Around about 900 meters. Well, we'll get an indication now at 400 meters what pace they're going to go through in. 56.20. So we were hoping for a high 55. So it's a touch slower than we were hoping for. But certainly it looks like we've got a chance of getting quite a few Olympic qualifications from those men who currently don't have it. So still Cremoy then from Kipsang. Whiteman, Jesus Gomez, the Spaniard just going through. That's Richard Doma of the Netherlands. Then tucked in about fifth position is Musa Gala from Deval Grice. Uh, also then in around about sixth or seventh, just behind Charlie Deval Grice. Was uh, Simotuo as well. But now all of a sudden now, there's a move made by the pacemaker. Nobody's gone with him at the moment. It's still Abel Kipsang of Kenya who's just starting to wind it up now. 
Yeah, the athletes will be aware of the pace they've been asked for, of course, and uh, it looks quite significantly slower than the 152 that they were looking for at 800 metres. But Kip Sanger is, who's come to the front. He's overtook Ken Wai there, and he wants to push on the pace. So a couple of seconds slower than they've asked at 800 metre points. Well, they do have the wave light technology, and as you might be able to see on the inside, those purple and green lights are sneaking away from them. So this is a, now a race rather than a time trial, and the fact it has been, uh, although still relatively modest, it still has strung the, uh, the large field out. And there's about six or seven who've got themselves in single file at the head of affairs. And still, it's Quemoy then from Gomez in second, Whiteman third, Deval Grice coming up on the outside of, uh, sorry, it's Kipsang at the front, Quemoy now in fifth position. The two Brits just moving up onto the shoulder of Jesus Gomez. Luke McCann mentioning him in the yellow of Ireland as well, uh, is also going pretty well on the inside in about seventh position. Yeah, Deval Grice has got himself in a good position there, hasn't he? And he's kicked himself into second place. He ran 3.33 and bits in the United States just last weekend. So under that Olympic qualification time, three, four weeks out from that British Olympic trials. So he'll be delighted with that sort of time. And 300 meters to go, still Kipsang. Whiteman's still there, Deval Grice is there, and Quenboy, he's back, he was the early leader, and he's there in second place as Whiteman comes up onto his shoulder, slots into second place with 200 metres to go. So Jake Whiteman takes over, fresh from his win in Poland in the European Team Championships, where he was captain of Great Britain, he's been running some 800s for sharpness, but 1500 will be his target in Tokyo, and he's moving away now and asking questions of this field with Kipsang and Quenboy in pursuit. Gomez is failing, but it's Jake Whiteman looking strong. Jake Whiteman is going to take the victory here and he's pulling away in the final 30 metres. It'd be a great win for Jake Whiteman and quite a fast time in the end under Olympic qualification. 3.34.66. Jake Whiteman is in shape. Well, in terms of uh, racing, and getting it right, he had himself in the, in the box seat, didn't he, for most of the way, Jake Whiteman. He was always third or fourth, right within striking distance, in case anybody in front decided to try anything, uh, try anything naughty. And in the end, he struck at exactly the right time with about 200 metres to go, and the others didn't have the answers. No, and that's the ideal sort of race. If the race goes that way, that's what you'd always like. You don't really like to lead these races. If you can be in sixth, um, you know, in first six positions, I always think if the field are quite tightly bunched like they were, that's always significant. But he really spied his chance, didn't he, to hit the front with 150 metres. And no one really looked like they were going to come past him. And significantly for me, the last half of the home straight, he pulled away again. And that was a dominant victory in the end for Jake Whiteman. And you're looking at the, the field he's beaten there, Charlie. Deval Grice is a 3.30 runner. Uh, Musa Gala is a 3.30 runner at his best as well. We look at Quemoy, who's a 3.28 runner. Uh, a lot of 3.32 and 3.32 runners. So that is a, that is a comfortable victory in the end for uh, Jake Whiteman. And again, we talk about confidence boosts, plenty of those. Men's long jump, first look at it. Christopher Mitrevsky of Australia, currently in third position. Oh, that looks good. That looks around about eight meters for Mitrevsky. Who didn't look uh, massively enamored with it, but. I'll wait for the distance to be uh, confirmed for Christopher Mitrevsky. 8.22 is the Olympic qualifying standard, by the way, which he doesn't have. Oh, 8.04. Still doesn't have it. <laughs> well, it's uh, such a tight margin, isn't it? He's got a season's best of 8.03, so he's now replaced that with an 8.04, and a personal best from two years ago at 8.05. So consistent, but he could do with finding 20 centimetres. No such problems for the South African, the double African champion, world bronze medalist from a couple of editions back, Rusmal Samai of South Africa. He has the standard. This is round four, and that is looking to be a roundabout. What uh, Mitrevsky produced a moment ago for... Ruswal Samai, who was the favourite on paper going into this. 49 PB from back in uh, 2017. But Samai in and around that eight metre line. And actually, Samai is the only member of this 10 athlete field who has the Olympic qualifying standard. And just to talk about people coming to take opportunities, as Samai registers eight metres 10, he is the leader of the, uh, the competition, is Ruswal Samai. Out of these 10 athletes, nine different nationalities, just the two Australians, Frame and Mitrevsky, representing uh, the nation. But here's Augustine Bay. 
in round five. Sitting in second position with his 8.09, just behind Rusuel Samai. Oh, yes, for Augustin Bay. Needs the standard. 8.22, that's going to be close. That was a great jump, wasn't it? And I think he looked, yeah, I was going to say, it looked pretty good on the board as well. Oh, that is going to be close. Goodness me. 8.22 for Augustin Bay, the European Team Championships bronze medalist from a couple of weeks ago. In Poland, 8.16, agonizing, but still a really, really good jump and a personal best for Agustin Bay, improving his previous of 8.13. Oh, he enjoyed that one. He really reached with that last step. You could see when you saw the slow motion shot of his foot on the board, you could see that his full leg was fully um, stretched out and uh, yeah, that distance on the board really helped him get out to that 8.16 there. Great personal best for him. And that took him the win ahead of Rusmal Samai and Christopher Mitrevsky, four athletes over eight metres. So that was the men's long jump. We have three track events still to come and the conclusion of the men's pole vault as well as we wrap up the result of the men's 1500 metres. Impressive win for Jake Whiteman in 3.34.67. He was one of those who was left behind in the 800 metres by Max Bergen's European under 20 record in Ostrava. As we mentioned, Jake Whiteman focusing on the 1500 metres for Tokyo has the standard. All he has to do now is win what will be a very competitive British Championships. Kipsang and Gomez making up the top three. So we've already seen the Hup Sifan barriers or uh, boards, I should say, earlier on. Now they've uh, starting to appear for that lady, Daphna Skippers, a double world champion over 200 metres, who's opted for some speed work she's had some back problems over the course of the last year or so which have just been affecting her start she was saying so really the 100 meters she's been opting to, to run over the 100 rather than the 200 to try and uh, get some speed practice and some starting practice i guess under real pressure and i think it's fair to say she'll have some pressure today no, none more so than the lady on her inside the world 200 meters champion dina asher smith yeah, she will. And actually, Daphne Schippers has never been beaten in all her appearances here at the FB Games. And uh, she's going to really have to pull something out to finish across that line in first place on this one. Well, Dina Asher-Smith, who uh, registered 11.35 in Gateshead in those uh, horrendous headwinds of 3.1, it equated to around about 11.08, actually, when you, uh, you make the wind adjustment. But we'll come to Dina in a second, because this is Leonie van Vliet on the inside of the Netherlands. Big Dutch uh, interest in this event, not just with skippers, also with Naomi Sedney. We mentioned her younger sister, Zoe, who ran very well in the high hurdles earlier on. Sydney was in action earlier on in the heat of this 11.45. She ran in a national event for a bit of race practice. Ayala Del Pont, who's looking to get back to some of the form that uh, saw her win a couple of Diamond League events last year. But there is the world silver medalist over 100, the world gold medalist over 200, Dina Asher-Smith of Great Britain. Saw Shelly Ann Fraser Price yesterday run that incredible time of 10.64 to go second all time behind Florence Griffith Joyner. Daphne Skippers, 11.22 she registered earlier on, a comfortable winner of that national race, effectively a heat for her. Blessing Okegbare, 32 years of age, but she's been in some good form this year, as you can see by the proximity of her season's best to her personal best. 10.9, she ran in the Diamond League in Doha. Daryl Nita is the European number one this year. Spent a lot of time out in Florida. 11.12, her season's best, which is the European lead at the moment. And Ketia Sado of the Netherlands. Just 17 years of age. Great experience for her to be in the field with the likes of Skippers and Asher Smith and Okekbare. And Rani Rossius of Belgium. Also had a Diamond League meeting victory under her belt from last year as well in a non-Diamond League event. But it's Asher Smith against Skippers side by side. Big mutual respect between those two. Will they be lining up alongside each other in the Tokyo final over 100 and or 200? Olympic qualifier, by the way, 11.15. Asher Smith, Skipper Zokic, Bari, and Nita all have it. Everybody else needs it. But Asher Smith, she got a response to Shelly Ann Fraser Price yesterday, going number two all time. Didn't get her conditions in Gateshead. Looks like she's got them in Hengelo. Women's 100 metres. Yeah. 
So away you go, Asher Smith is out well, taking Del Pont with her skippers, of course, gets into her running in the second half of the race, but it's Dina Asher Smith at the moment, Okigbari and Nita also running well. Dina Asher Smith up towards the line, 10.93, meeting record for Dina Asher Smith, benefiting from a bit of a tailwind of 0.8 metres per second, but Asher Smith goes sub 11, and things will be back on track after those awful conditions in Gateshead. This time, Asher Smith lays down sub 11, 10.92. It's rounded down to four, the World 200 metre champion. Well, Dina Rasha Smith had a very low key 2020. I remember she ran 150 meters. I think it was at her local club, so that would have been amazing for all her club mates and some of the youngsters to see her race there. But 10.92 seconds and a whole tenth in front of Akabari. She looks so impressive in Doha in the Diamond League. That's been a big, big win for Asha Smith. And Nita there, Daryl Nita in third place, 11.04, a season's best for her as well. And that is actually an outdoor personal best for Daryl Nita as well, beating her 11.12, so that's a great performance from her. But Asha Smith, you mentioned the meeting record. The meeting record owner before that, Daphne Skippers. Well, looking at Daphne Skippers there, she's on the in, so she's between the two uh, leading athletes there. And I thought she ran great. I thought she ran great in the national race earlier. A lot of pressure for her to come in when she's not quite at her best. She's definitely getting back towards that. But that high step from Dina Asha Smith, you could see it after around about 10 metres. And the victory was uh, never in doubt, really, after that first 10 metres. 10.92, making sub-11 seconds. Look easy, meet in and meet out. Great start to the season for her. Good race for Great Britain, first and third then. Sandwiched with Blessing Okebara, who continues to be in and around the 11 second mark. But Dina Asha Smith responding, if you like, to Shelly Ann Fraser Price and the likes of Shikari Richardson, of course, still doing their thing in the Diamond League circuit as well. But this is Mondo de Plantis then in the pole vault. 5.92. And goes over at 5.92 again with some comfort. It was, wasn't it? And I think 92, the bar was set at that because that's a meeting record. So, you know, in this past two hours, we've seen so many meeting records. 40th edition of the FBK Games. And if you think about the athletes who's competed over the years, this is one of the most stacked fields that we've ever had in every single discipline. So meet record 592, but how much further can he uh, bring that meet record up? Six metres will be his next bar that he attempts. That's also the world lead for Duplantis, who goes above Chris Nielsen's 591. Menno Vloon at 592 as well. He passed at 586. So, end of the competition for Menno Vloon. That was his third attempt at 592. Nearly got his uh, legs tangled right round the bar there on the way down, but uh, still, having taken three attempts to get over 562, first time clearances at 74 and 80, will give uh, Mano Vloon a bit of confidence living with uh, Duplantis through the later heights. Duplantis, a clean card so far at 592, and as you mentioned, Jenny, the bar has gone up to six metres for the world record holder. World record mark, if you're not aware, six meters and 18 set in Glasgow. The World Athlete of the Year from a male point of view. He's got the victory already in his back pocket now. And now we're heading up towards some of the glory heights, I guess, now. Pressure free, six meters, Mondo. I say pressure free, then there's always a pressure and an expectation, isn't there? Bearing in mind what he's achieved and the heights he's achieved, there's that, that level of expectation brings a little bit of pressure. I'm not sure if it affects Mondo, but certainly the crowd will be expecting him to, uh, to be challenging these kind of marks. Yeah, we're really being spoiled. Six metres was one of those heights that you would only see, you know, once um, every couple of years that an athlete attempted, it, but it's almost every single competition when Defant is. Uh, takes part he did break that 26 year old world record last year september it was when he went out to uh, 615 in rome but 618 he's actually cleared indoors confirmation there that women's 100 meters the meeting record from asher smith taking it off daphne skippers by a couple of hundredths of a second and a pb for daryl nita of great britain in third 11 04. 
The clock is already ticking for Duplantis. Great Britain also have uh, sprinters like Asher Phillip and Imani Lansico, who have the uh, Olympic standard already to throw into the, uh, the competition the, for the uh, British trials. There's uh, some of the 1,500 spectators who've been enjoying, well, it feels like a, a different day, but when Sifat Hassan ran that incredible 29.06, 10,000 metres, right at the start of the... Uh, international broadcast that we brought you here it really did lift the 1500 people off their feet in Hengelo as we go back to the women's discus and the Olympic champion Sandra Perkovic fifth round and around about that 65 meter mark again that we've seen from a couple of her rivals the likes of Perez and Saar as well has had a bit of a rhythm issue in this. The three of her first uh, four attempts were fouls. We wait for the measurement for Berkovic, 65-80 in round five. Not enough for the, but it is enough for the lead. Sorry, Sandra Berkovic takes the lead, 65-80 in round five. So she's taken the lead with that throw from the world champion Jaime Perez of Cuba. Looking to stretch that 65 meter line up towards 66. Again, that's in the same sort of area, isn't it? So that's going to be close to 65.80. She's produced a very consistent series. Got her first one wrong, did Perez at 55 meters, but everything since then has been a 64 or 65. Sixty-five, ninety-one. that is the victory for Jaime Perez of Cuba in the women's discus. Taking the scalp of the Olympic champion, Sandra Perkovic. So with the clock at three and a half minutes, Duplantis begins his pre-flight routine. Bit of chalk. Confirmation of those marks. Olympic qualifying standard, by the way, 6350. But all of the uh, protagonists already had it. Anyway. The uh, customary Dutch floral bouquet for our winner, Jaime Perez. On the track, we still have certainly one of the events that uh, I know the local crowd will be looking forward to, which will be the appearance of Femke Bol in the women's 400 metres hurdles. Before that, the men's 400 metres hurdles. You can see the barriers laid out at the Fanny Bankers Blankers Kuhn Stadion. In the Eastern Netherlands, Netherlands and that will be your lineup for the men's 800 meters in the standout names are on there certainly Abdurrahman Samba the world bronze medalist from 2019 Sibilio on his inside has been running well this season from His context anyway the young Italian But here before all that is Mondo de Plantis live pictures of his second attempt at six meters Oh yes, Mondo, in Olympic year, the first man to clear six meters, predictably enough, is Mondo de Plantis. And I tell you what, is there more to come, Jenny Meadows? Well, you talked about the pressure and we wondered whether, you know, how he handles that pressure. But I remember when he did the world indoor record in um, Glasgow and he had to wait for quite a long time before he was allowed to actually take his attempt. And that was unbelievable. And he managed to get the world record then. And there was some daylight, wasn't there, between him and the bar. That Sometimes when he goes for the greater heights, he almost is technically better. So um, that meant a lot to him, definitely. That's a great psychological barrier, isn't it? To become the first man to clear six meters in uh, in Olympic year. He did speak in the uh, the pre-event press conferences. Uh, this is technology these days. It just gets filmed on a phone. And even <laughs> if you're the uh, you know the world male athlete of the year, you watch it back on a phone. Um, he did speak about it'd be nice to take Sam Kendrick's meeting record as revenge for Gateshead when he turned him over Kendrick. But uh, he's done that. Meeting record and now a six metre jump as well. Let's pick up the men's 400 metres then as we meet Ramsey Angela on the outside, the 21 year old for the Netherlands, part of their European indoor relay winning team. Ludwig Vaillant of France, silver medalist at the European Team Championships. Nick Smith, European under 23, silver medalist over the barriers. Again, running well, ranked 32 out of the top 40 in terms of the Tokyo rankings. Doesn't have the standard so far, which is 48 9. Yasmani Capello of Turkey, world silver medalist 
from London 2017, Olympic bronze medalist from Rio. Abdurrahman Samba then. We've seen Karsten Varholm throw down a world best over 300 hurdles in Oslo on Friday. We've seen Rai Benjamin flying. Samba looking to get himself onto the top level running up to the Olympics. Sibilio there of uh, Italy, twice the European team's championship winner, in fact, uh, with a relay gold as well as an individual one. Guernsey will be watching on, I'm sure, and supporting Alistair Chalmers, who also took a silver medal at the European team champs over the 400 hurdles with his first senior GB vest. And Nuuk Vardenberg of the Netherlands right on the inside, another of their relay team from the World Relays. 48.9 then, the Olympic standard for the likes of Sibilio. As the Chalmers needs to find seven tenths, but making progress all the time. But all eyes really on that man in lane four, Abdurrahman Samba, the world bronze medalist. He ran 48.2 in the Doha Diamond League a couple of weeks ago. He's run a couple of flat 400s this year as well. So away they go then, keep an eye on the orange of Capello on the outside of Samba who will keep him in his sights, Vaillant of France, one from the left of your camera shot there, is also going strongly through the early stages and may just have risen first at that barrier, but now Samba starting to make his presence felt on Capello around the outside, it is Samba at the halfway point at the moment now, they're towing Nick Smith outside them along, who's running strongly as well. Just getting his stride pattern sorted there, Samba, as they come into the straight. Samba on his right is Capello. Smith holding on to the top four. Vaillant of France there as well, but now Abderam and Samba opens up a bit of clear water, but Capello is not going away at the moment. Samba over that final barrier and away. Capello keeping him up to his work, but Samba takes it in 48.58 in the end from Capello coming through in second. And the W for Abderam and Samba. With those great shakes on the top. No, 48.56. Uh, Samba has run three tenths faster than that so far in Doha in the Diamond League just uh, last week. But that's still, there's only himself and three other men who's run faster than that time that he's just recorded there today in Henglo. So very consistent, mid 48 seconds. Just getting to see here, and it was nice to see Capello back, wasn't it? He had the unfortunate position of um, having Samba on his inside, so he saw him come past him on the back straight, but I thought Capello did really well on that bend there and into the home straight. Samba didn't run too far away from him, and Capello with a few more races in those legs. They're tough, these 400-metre hurdle men. I think he'll come good in the next few weeks. Well, it was a good run from uh, Nick Smith of the Netherlands as well. He finished in uh, third place in 49.43. Unfortunately for him, half a second outside of that uh, Olympic qualifying time. But as you say, the strength, the 400-meter hurdles, guys. We see the, the likes of Varholm, who's keeping his cards close to his chest at the moment in terms of the full distance and the barriers. But a couple of flat 400s for Samba, followed by a couple over the barriers, just building that race strength, ready to peak at the right time. Certainly there today. Comfortable winner, really, in the end from Capello. So just to put this, uh, in good conditions. Height into context, it would be Mondo De Plantis, by the way, in the background, has uh, put the bar up to six metres and ten. There he is, right on cue. Six metres and ten centimetres for De Plantis. Getting himself ready. He gets a bit of extra time by the fact that he's the only uh, competitor left in the competition, so although his jump clock is running, it's uh, by the time he's the, the last man left in the competition, there are several minutes on that uh, on that jump clock. We talk about uh, the lady marks in the, uh, the all-time world list. This would be the third best outdoor jump ever. Behind his own 6.15 that you mentioned, Jenny, in Rome last year. And Bubka, the great Sergei Bubka at 6 metres 14. They are the top two on the world outdoor list. So as soon as the pole comes down, let's see this would be uh, an attempt at the all-time number three the jump. Follow his lead. Here we go. This rhythm. As I say that, I should say that only two men have jumped more than that. Right? These two individually, Bubka and Duplantis, have jumped higher 
than 6'10 themselves, but only two men have jumped higher than 6'10. First attempt. Not today, so far. Attempt one. Renola Villani, of course, jumps 616 indoors. Two more attempts at uh, 610. Talking about outdoor marks here at 610. What you can see is run up there. It started all the way in the actual high jump fan. He's already <laughs> used all of the stretch that he's got for the pole vault. So this is De Plantis on the longest approach he'll use. Of course, he needs that. He needs to generate the speed, to generate the momentum, to bend that bar and get him up towards those 6'10 heights. And he's up for it, isn't he? You know, the meet director again, you know, spoke to us yesterday and talked us through all the bar progressions. And she went as far as six meters and I think she didn't dare go any further. Uh, 6'10, that must just be a height that he thinks, you know, I'd be really satisfied if I could walk away with a 6'10 from today. Time for our final track action of the FBK Games in Hengelo for 2021, and it is the women's. One lap over the barriers, and all local eyes on Femke Boll, the European indoor champion over the flat 400 meters, just 21 years of age, and this is her first race over the hurdles this season. On the outside, though, is Emma Zablatalova of the Slovak Republic. Her personal best is under the Olympic qualifying standard of 55.4. On her inside, she's got the Olympic silver medalist from Rio 2016. Vastly experienced Sara Slot peterson of Denmark. She's been in the mid-55s this year. Another of the very experienced 400 hurdlers is Anna Rzyskova of Ukraine. European silver medalist last time round in 2018. Lena, Lena. Lena Nielsen, I'm sure, will have watched and supported her twin sister Lavia run very well in the 400 flat earlier on. Lena Nielsen set a PB of 55.27 this year. Femke Boll. Big local support behind Femke Boll, who, of course, as the likes of Delilah Mohammed and Sidney McLaughlin to contend with potentially in Toko. Venda Nell of South Africa, three times an African champion. Pauline Kokouts, the European under 23 champion from uh, the last staging in 2019 for Belgium, is in lane two. And right on the inside is the, uh, the US based Barbadian, Tiadana Bell. We mentioned the Olympic qualifying standard only. Zabla Talava on the outside doesn't have it. Everybody else already has it. So for these athletes, it's going to be race strength in their legs. But Femke Bolt, I'm sure a couple of butterflies as she takes on the 400 barriers for the first time this Olympic year. Bell of Barbados on the inside. Kokout, Nell, Boll in four, Lena Nielsen, Rzyskova, Peterson, Zabla Talava. Women's 400 hurdles to close the track program in Hengelo. <laughs> well, certainly we've seen Femke Boll use her 400 hurdles strength to good effect on the okay, flat. And she was already probably up at that first barrier, closing on Lena Nielsen on her outside. Rishkova in those long white socks, three from the left of your shot as well. But Femke Bol, the tallest of the athletes, makes those barriers look very small and has come past Lena Nielsen. Bol, the clear leader at this stage. Peterson, one from the outside, the Olympic silver medalist, also in contention, but it's Bol by probably three or four meters coming into the home straight as the stagger unwinds in her favor. Just got the approach to that hurdle wrong, but manages to steady herself all on in. The chase for second place, Nell of South Africa in lane three is running well, and also Rajiskova now coming on strong late on, but Femke Boll over that final hurdle. Rajiskova closing all the time, but Femke Boll will hold on. 54.35 for Femke Boll. Meeting record as well, which I'm sure will go down very well with the locals taking the mark of Kim Batten from the best part of 25 years ago. And Femke Boll has opened her season over the barriers with 54.33. Well, another meet record again for Femke Ball. 
It looked hard though, that, didn't it? She looked absolutely fantastic for seven hurdles, but sometimes these 400 meters and these 400 meter hurdles, you just need to get a couple of races in those legs. Training, of course, you work hard, but nothing can quite create that sense of lactic acid and uh, she'll be feeling it here. You can see that she's got a great stride pattern. She's still running really nice there, but those legs, believe you me, those quads will be feeling the lactic and she'll be grateful to see that line at that point. You could almost see it. She came over the penultimate hurdle in the home straight. She was almost like gritting her teeth in the air as she uh, was really digging deep. Back we go to Mondo de Plantis, live in the pole vault. Second attempt, six metres, 10. Oh, not far away from a height that only two men, including himself, have previously surpassed outdoors. Well, he's got one last hurrah. Jenny, he got closer there, didn't he? He did get closer, and he was disappointed with that one. He was actually lying on the bed and looking sideways um, at his mum, I think, Helena. She was the lady that we saw in our caption earlier, and she was showing him the replay on her phone. And uh, yeah, he'll be going back over to the sidelines, no doubt, going over to his mum, watching that approach, see what he can improve. But uh, these attempts are really, really tiring. You know, at six meters 10, it takes a lot out of energy from him, uh, as it did Femke Ball for that 400 meter hurdles victory. Well. There's the face of someone who hasn't run a 400 competitively over the barriers. Just making sure over that last barrier, conservatively. Quite impressed with Rizkova's run in that second place, albeit with Bolt still with plenty more to, uh, to find as she uh, gets those races in her legs. And in the end, it was a uh, third place for Munda Nell of South Africa with 55-25. We can see it took her a few minutes to get off the ground. Once you're on that ground, it's hard to get yourself back <laughs> up. So, uh, yeah, well done to Benki Ball. A great start to, uh, to her season, taking that meet record 54-33. Uh, and a strong finish, as you said, Chris, from, um, from the Ukrainian athlete there with a season's best of 54-59. Well, I mentioned that Emma Zablatalova was the only athlete in the field who didn't have the standard. Well, she's got it now, 55-29, underneath that 55.4. Olympic qualifying standard, so a good day for the Slovak athlete as well, Zabla Talova. So, the stadium now, there will be some presentations, I think, after the uh, end of Mondo Duplantis' series, but the stadium, not for the first time in his career, all eyes on the Swede, Mondo Duplantis. And you do have to sometimes just remind yourself, this guy is 21 years of age. He's already jumped 6 metres 18 by the age of 21. He's a freak. <laughs> in the nicest possible way, Absolutely. of course. <laughs> yeah, I think when you look down at all his statistics, that's the biggest one that stands out to me. I remember him being absolutely gutted not to win that World Championships in Doha. And he was 19 years of age at the time. And you're almost thinking, you know, wait, this isn't supposed to happen when you're 19. But by the time he was 20 last year, it already took all the records, world indoor record, world outdoor record. People have been excited about Mondo de Plantis for... For a decade, he's been doing the pole vault since he's been a young child, and uh, we can see the fruits of his labor all those years. And I think hopefully we can sit back and watch him take numerous uh, attempts at world records in the future. Well, just taking his time at the moment, as we say, with that uh, jump clock on his side. And uh, just, this is the bonus now, just having a chance to collect himself, looking around and knowing the expectations. And we just saw a couple of young fans there who's quickly scrawled out there, Duplantis, support banners in the crowd. He's a man who makes waves everywhere he goes. He's very popular with uh, the media. He gives great sound bites as well. He's got that character. They have this uh, great camaraderie between the pole vaulters. But of course, that does, you know, in Olympic year, you'll know this, Jenny, as well, from, from your major championship competitions. Everybody who's on your team, of course, your teammates, your friends with a lot of them, your training partners with a lot of them as well. But in Olympic year, the closer and closer you get, all of a sudden, you just start to bring those barriers in, don't you? And all of a sudden, it's all about you and achieving your goal. 
Yeah, it's really important that that happens. But, you know, I've been watching some of these uh, events, especially to having the opportunity to commentate. And the pole vaulters, I've got to say, it's almost like they're combined eventers. They really so the respect Clark each other and there's great friendship. You know, I've seen seconds. Katie Nagot, she's um, American athlete she's in the pole vault. She's been We've using Holly Bradshaw's coach, Scott Simpson, We've sometimes at events, um, you know, to help her sight some of the yeah, bars and, you know, her run up. And she's Last really said thank you to him. And I think they the just, these are hard events, you know, the pole vault, the amount of training, all the different components and the technicalities that it comes, you know, you have to put into it. I think they generally just enjoy the challenge from each other. So they are friends. Of course, they do want to beat each other on the day. But if somebody beats you on the day, that's just done a better performance than you. I think they just, you know, respect each other for that. And we've loved watching the pole vault. It's been taken into a new era, the depth in this event as well. You know, four guys here still in the event at five meters 80. It's sort of events that we've not seen and performance we've not seen that depth for a number of years so absolutely great to watch that camaraderie between these vaulters and a great bit of uh, creativity as well from those guys you've got a whole sentence there across four boards uh, just to contextualize this again for duplantis uh, this would be his second best ever outdoor 615 in rome last year is his best outdoor vault the next uh, eight nine jumps on the list outdoors all belong to sergei bubka this would equal the sixth best outdoor jump ever for Mondo Duplantis at six meters ten. If for some reason you've only just turned on, he was reasonably close with his last attempt. He's become the first man this year in Olympic year to clear six meters. Hengelo all of a sudden expects a light breeze, hopefully not affecting him too much. Mondo Duplantis has one last go at six meters and 10 centimeters, getting himself hyped. Can he send the crowd home from Hengelo on a high? Yes, he can! Huge in Hengelo for Mondo. Six meters 10, his second best outdoor jump ever for the world record holder, wow! You just sensed it, didn't you? You could see the build up. He was taking some sort of energy gum or something. He was sat in his chair, just, you know, I explained how the energy sometimes drains out of you when you've been attempting these big heights. He just sat back, he was nodding his head, he was enjoying the music, wasn't he? And that was relaxation. A lot of athletes sometimes tense up, especially younger athletes, when they're trying to achieve something really, really difficult. But he was relaxed, he was ready. And look at that, great view from the side there. Well, we said he was getting closer, didn't we? First one wasn't particularly close, second one a bit closer, and that one didn't even give it a brush. 6'10". If the expectation wasn't already mounting, he's going to put it up. Well, it's all, this, is, this is now a balance, isn't it? This is the balance between being the entertainer, between pushing yourself to see what you've got in the locker, not risking anything. Let's see where he goes with the bar. Surely he's got to go up to an outdoor, outdoor world record, isn't he? It's interesting, isn't it, on a season like this? Does he just pack away and think 6'10", I've come away fit, healthy, but I've just heard in the background <laughs> Jeff Whiteman on the commentating in the stadium, 6'19", he's going for a world record. 6'19", for Armand Duplantis, which would be an outright world record. We mentioned his best outdoors hit the world best outdoors of six meters 15 his best indoors six meters 18 and he is strapping on the kitchen sink and is about to throw it at that bar and we talk about like camaraderie general we talk about you know as you said the the, the uh, pole vault is particularly but a lot of people talk about pole vault being by the time that clock starts and you get yourself into your pre-vault routine it's you against the bar as more than you against the other competitors yeah it is and you know we talked about in the 10,000 meters which feels forever ago now when we're talking about Sifan Hassan trying to keep that mental kind of dexterity you know over that 25 laps and it's very similar for Mondo now he needs to just really relax bring himself down, think about all these technical things that he needs to do. It's him on that runway against the bar and he's just really challenging himself. 
seeing how far he could actually, you know, improve that world record by. But um, it's great that Heath actually thinks, I'm here, I'm in shape, I'm over 6'10", I'm going to carry on. So, far. This is only the, uh, so he had a clean card up until he got to 6 metres. He cleared 550, 74, 86 and 92 at the first attempts. It took two attempts to get over 6 metres. Having so taken that world lead from uh, Chris Nielsen of the uh, USA, but I'm sure I'm sure Sam Kendricks might even be tuned in watching from the USA. This coverage going globally around the world, wherever you are, whatever your time zone you're in, whether it be uh, in Europe coming up towards uh, late afternoon, maybe in the US in the morning, maybe you're further afield in uh, Africa, well into the evening, maybe it's the middle of the night. Wherever you are, stop what you're doing because Mondo Duplantis is at it again. 619 is going to go for for a world record and again let's bring it all back together we started the day with a world record so why don't we just finish one with well we'll finish with one as well well this is the 40th edition of the FB games unfortunately due to the pandemic this meet did not take place last year but it's come back with a bang hasn't it you know we've got one world record already and just that Mondo's in a position to be attempting a world record as well is absolutely fantastic well, he was the indoor world record holder since uh, February 2020. And then in uh, September 2020, he broke the 26-year-old outdoor world record, which has stood at 6 metres 14 from uh, Sergei Bubka of 1994 in Sestriere. I'm just looking down the, uh, the list of the, uh, the top outdoor performances. I'm looking to see if I can see the Netherlands anywhere on there, and I can't. So uh, Netherlands has never seen anything like this. There's ever been a six metre outdoor jump in the Netherlands, actually, as I scroll further down the world rankings top list. He's taking his time. I wonder how many cracks he'll have at this. I wonder if he'll know after the first one. He's uh, pushing himself. Mentioned two for Obiena, who finished second, by the way, with five metres 80, and Vloon, the uh, Dutch athlete who finished third on countback with 580. They were the closest challengers to Mondo de Plantis. And he was quite honest in his press conference. He said, you know, he's, he's, there's been a couple of things that haven't quite been working for him so far. When we look at his performances that he's turned in so far outdoors, 590, I mean, it says, you know, 590 is by no means average, but he just felt that a couple of things, he struggled with a couple of the lesser heights earlier in those competitions. The Strava, he jumped 590. Gateshead in those conditions that we keep banging on about, 555 to finish behind Sam Kendricks. But uh, I challenge anybody to jump successfully in those conditions. But, as he makes a final adjustments to his mark, that is the precision there, look. Drawing pins. We thought it was scientific, Jenny. <laughs> and I think he moved them about one centimetre. It was so minute. But um, that's what it takes to attempt this sort of um, height. Yellow and blue drawing pins. Swedish national colours. Got a bit of yellow on his pole, and his blue Puma uniform as well. But at the moment, it's half of Hengelo, and a large amount of you around the world standing by to see if there is another chapter of history to be written at the FBK Games today. As Jenny says, on that 40th anniversary, Armand Duplantis, the world record holder already, looking to improve his own mark. Six metres and 19. What's wrong with him? Too loud. Too loud the music, is it? It's a shame he doesn't get to choose the music, isn't it? I'm sure this wouldn't be his uh, music of choice, but uh, it certainly did him well on the last attempt. I'm sure a man of his standing, if the music was too loud, he could tell him to turn it down. So, they're all getting behind him. The whole stadium is his at the moment. Is the whole of pole vault his? Again, 6.19 for a world record. First time. So he takes that as a foul, giving him a bit more rest time because there was only two So sensible, I think. I think sometimes you just don't feel it on the runway. There's no point taking off. There's obviously a huge injury risk if he took off and he wasn't in the right position. So he's done the right thing. I'm just trying to look out, trying to lip read and see what he's uh, talking to the officials about there at the, uh, the pit. He seems to be looking over towards the, uh, the stand. It's not Jeff Whiteman on the PA that's upsetting him, is it? He's too loud. <laughs> I have no hesitation in telling Jeff if he is. <laughs> so Mondo de Plant is just uh, calling time on that one, halfway down the runway. You can see a few are just hovering in the background, aren't they? Just in case 
No one wants to go home and miss history, do you? It's like leaving any sporting event with a minute to go and someone scoring a last minute goal or try or whatever it is that might uh, have a big bearing on the match. You don't want to leave a stadium with a world record, particularly when everyone's been locked out of stadiums for so long. The traffic can wait. Well, it's really nice to see all these uh, competitors as well on the infield. They're all stood up, paying him respect, and they're just wondering whether they can be part of uh, this history and get probably the best view in the whole of the stadium of this world record attempt. Well, once the uh, once the foul was taken, once he crossed the vertical plane of the uh, the uprights. For the previous attempt, his clock will reset his jump clock. If it had stopped halfway down the runway and gone back, as you can see, the clock still got five minutes on that uh, jump clock. But if he'd stopped halfway down, he could have gone back and uh, attempted again if he had enough time remaining. But the Volta's at this particular stage of the competition, when you're asking and stretching your every sinew of your body, you're going to take as much of that time as you possibly can. Yeah, and he's in the fortunate position now where. He gets extra time on the clock, of course, because he's the only remaining competitor. So, but continuing to uh, chunter away is Mondo Duplantis. Live with us here in Hengelo. Reminder, the World Athletics Continental Tour Gold moves across Europe very quickly. Not too far, actually. We're off to Turku in Finland for the Pavo Nurmi Games on Tuesday. Okay, That one will get underway at, uh, uh, in the evening. European time, check your local listings, whatever time zone you are in in the world. For myself and Jenny, back with you for Turco on Tuesday night in the World Athletics Continental Tour Gold. But we are still waiting to see if there is one last hurrah in Hengelo. Sifan Hassan, 29.06, a world record by over 10 seconds in the women's 10,000 metres to start the day. Mondo de Plantis, two more attempts remaining at six metres. 19 as pole vaulters of the future watch on in the background. Here we go with the rhythmic clapping. I don't know about you, Jim, but I just felt in the last couple of strides there, he was starting to think that maybe it wasn't there. Yeah, I think you can always tell by his face. And uh, he'll be exhausted at this point as well. And um, hopefully we'll see him take a third attempt. Well, talk about leaving it all out there and uh, just giving it everything you've got and not dying wondering or leaving the stadium today thinking, oh, maybe I should have just taken that last attempt. He tucked it all the way down, didn't he? But just uh, as soon as he planted there, it was he wasn't happening for him. So there is uh, one more, we hope, it looks like. He's certainly got the pole uh, still primed as if he's going to be uh, taking a third and final attempt in front of this uh, Hengelo crowd. We brought you some, uh, some great performances. We looked at Omar McLeod in the men's 100 metres earlier on, which was uh, an impressive run. One of the, uh, the coattails of performance of Grant Holloway this year. A very busy in men's 800 metres, which was won in the end by Mateusz Burkowski. Jasmine Camacho Quinn, a meeting record in the women's 100 metres hurdles. Gemma Riki, just outside two minutes in the women's 800 metres as well. Fred Curley, a dominant winner of the men's 400 in 44.7. Cynthia Belingo took the women's 400 ahead of Lavia Nielsen. Jake Whiteman, impressive winner of the men's 15 as well. Dina Asher-Smith taking Daphne Skipper's meeting record with 10.92 ahead of Okik Bari and a lifetime best for Daryl Nita. Dina Rasha smith will has uh, de deposed Daryl Nita as the European number one after that uh, run today, which again is uh, not a huge surprise for the world silver medalist. Abdurrahman Samba laying down another race over the barriers as he looks to build his race strength. And Femke Boll doing the same. She took a meeting record, despite uh, the fact it looked like hard work in the closing couple of stages on her hurdles debut for this season. But uh, a sprinkling of Olympic qualifying marks as well, so it's been a beneficial meeting for a lot of athletes in terms of uh, getting those marks that they may well need for their domestic championships, which are coming up in three weeks' time. Big week, actually, for athletics. We were saying, Jenny, before uh, we came on air, actually, you didn't know where to look over the weekend, did you, for, for uh, athletics performances? No sooner was Shelley Ann Fraser Price laid down, uh, what, 1060, 1064 in, uh, in Kingston in Jamaica. Then Trayvon Brazil, uh, Brumel throws down 977 in the uh, in the US. 
in Miramar to go with some of the distances performances we've seen as well. It's a, it's certainly a great time for athletics fans as these athletes all look to get themselves in prime Olympic shape. So they switch the music in the stadium for Duplantis, who prepares himself once more for one last go at creating another page in the remarkable Mondo Duplantis story. 21 years of age, already the world record holder, indoors and out. Can he unify the two with this and become the outright world record holder? Six meters and 19. Got closer and closer as the attempts at 6.10 went through to ultimately a third clearance. He's had an aborted effort so far, and then another aborted effort, but 6.19. At the final attempt then, Mondo de Plantis to close Hengelo. Can he do it with history? Not this time, unfortunately. Still the hero of Hengelo, I'm sure. Mondo de Plantis with that performance of six meters and 10 centimeters. Only two men in history, including himself, have vaulted higher than that. He takes the victory, and it's much more like the Mondo that we are used to seeing. He goes over six meters, becomes the first man this year to do so in Olympic year. His status as pole vault favorite is certainly not affected and is boosted by that as he takes his victory flowers to close our meeting here at the FBK Games. Jenny, have you got a, have you got a highlight to, to close with before we go? Is that it? We've just seen it. Oh, it's probably going to be uh, Hassan's uh, 10,000 metres for me. Just the amount of seconds, you know, almost 11 seconds that she knocked off that and the way she did it, those first 9K, so economical, and then that staggering 246 last K uh, that set it up for me but it's been one of the best meets that we've seen um, in the 40 editions of Henglo over the years yeah it certainly has its reputation doesn't it as uh, the home of fast distance running and Sifan Hassan as you quite rightly mentioned Jenny with her world record taking over 10 seconds off the mark joining the likes of Ken Lisa Bekele and Haile Gebra Selassie who have set distance world records on this track at the Fanny Blankers Kern Stadium in Hengelo. Confirmation then of that result. Duplantis has been on the uh, on the board himself for most of the competition, but Obiana taking second and the home favourite Menno Vloon taking third. You know, it definitely did that's his point, so definitely hope to hear that. So you like it here in Holland, so uh, we hope to see you back here again. The track is good, the track is ready. So another remarkable meeting in the World Athletics Continental Tour Gold. As we said, we'll do it all again on Tuesday from the Pavo Nomi Games in Turku in Finland. Some great fields lined up for that one as well, live via the World Athletics YouTube channel. Check your local timings and listings for that one as well. But for myself, Chris Temple and Jenny Meadows, thanks for your company. It's goodbye.